Drops back, keeps it himself across the 10, 5, dies to the end zone, touchdown Notre Dame. Home run ball for another one, it's a Lindsay, he's gone, 70 yards, and the Irish are on fire. Third in football presented by Coca-Cola, third time in four years, the Irish and the Hokies meet, road team has won the first two. Definitely tense week here in South Bend with last week. Really a shock to the system. Brian Kelly's been messaging his team all week and a moment ago in the Notre Dame locker room. Everybody's required to do that when they put this jersey on. That's who we represent. The strong, the committed. Everybody in this room is representing that today when we touch this football field. Play fast, play physical, play for each other so we can come back in here and celebrate when somebody takes a shot at us, we get right back up and we respond in the way that we know we can. That's Notre Dame football. That's what's gonna be on display today. Let's get ready to play our very best. Nobody has seen it yet. Let's put it on display today. Undefeated in their last 15 at home, and they need to be home to find that comeback mode. loss in his Notre Dame decade. And a lot of questions surrounding Ian Book, eight completions in the tough conditions at Michigan. Oh, we can go tonight. Winners of their last three, very much alive in the always humorous ACC Coastal. Second time in South Bend for Hokie Nation. Here comes Virginia Tech. Quarter century is Frank Beamer. Now it's year four for Justin Fuente as the head hokey. We're going to watch Hendon Hooker as quarterback very closely today. Knee injury took him out of that last game. They've had a week off. Not sure how close to 100% he will be. Let's go down to the field where it is chilly. Catherine Tappen standing by with Brian Kelly. All right, Mike, thank you very much. Coach, you told us yesterday we must restore our identity as a football program. What specifically does that look like? As a team, I mean, this team's got to restore how to play this game. Uh, with their traits, you know, they got to play with a great deal of desire, passion, physicality, all the things that weren't on display last week, they're going to be on display today. A lot of your identity is centered around your quarterback. What do you need to see from Ian Book today? Ian Book needs to go out and play the kind of football he's capable of playing. We got to go make some plays for him. We got to protect him. Uh, I think we're going to do that today for him. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, Kathy. Mike. All right, Catherine. Thank you. There's a lot of confidence in Brian Kelly's words and his uh, facial expressions as well. With the Heisman Trophy winner, Doug Flutie. All right, so many questions off the Michigan game. What's the biggest one for you? I think can they reestablish, can Notre Dame reestablish their identity as a physical football team? Dominating the offensive and defensive lines last week. Over 300 yards rushing for Michigan, only 47 for Notre Dame. Basically says it all. Can they get past that hangover, what happens this week, get a smile on their face, go out and play tough, physical football and take control of the line of scrimmage? be honest it's no secret Ian Book hasn't progressed he's regressed a bit this year as you watch the coaches tape from Michigan what stuck out to you I think the number one thing was his eyes don't let your eyes drop down and start watching the pass rush keep them on coverage keep them down the field trust what you see and then deliver the ball he is an exceptional quarterback I really believe in Ian Book I think he throws the ball on rhythm on time he needs to get comfortable holding the ball just a little bit Trust what he sees, stay in that pocket. All right, speaking of quarterbacks, Ryan Willis was the quarterback when Virginia Tech played Notre Dame in Blacksburg last year. He comes out of the starting lineup. They make quarterback changes and things turn around. They've won three in a row. What do these other quarterbacks do? Both guys are dual threat guys. So depending on who's in there, uh, whether it's Hooker or Patterson, they both can take off and run with the football, especially Patterson physically. And because of that, because of the quarterback runs and the design quarterback runs, they become a more efficient offense and they're not turning the ball over. Hooker has seven touchdown passes to no interceptions through these last three games. So they are controlling the football on offense. Interesting dynamics for Virginia Tech. Big profile game against a ranked team. But this doesn't impact what they do in their conference in the ACC Coastal. If they win out, 
including a win over Virginia at the end of the year. They're going to represent this half of the ACC in the championship game. So this game in some ways is house money for them so they can play a little free for Notre Dame. You know the buildup and the pressure off of what happened last week. So for the Irish there is a tense uncertainty around this team. How will they respond folks who I know around the program said it was real positive around this team this morning. That's all well and good. We'll see what happens on the field as Notre Dame has won the toss and will receive. From Peachtree, Georgia, coming at the ball. Lawrence Keys back to return. Off we go from South Bend and from the three, it is Keys. And then Hard got tripped up at the 20. He was about to reach a little open space with room to rock. Well, we talked about Ian Book. Let's see the Jeep starting lines around the Notre Dame quarterback. Jafar Armstrong is going to start at running back. Tony Jones, very limited, probably won't see him with his rib injury. Look for Javon McKinley a bit more in the lineup today. First change in the starters up front this year. Tommy Kramer injured in the Michigan game. So graduate student Trevor Rulin will start for a unit in desperate need of a bounce back performance. We'll also see some of Josh Lug in there at guard as well. Book in the Irish opening drive from their own 21. And to the air right away. Book throws. It is caught by Cole Komet. It's going to be a gain of four to the 25. Caleb Farley, who is one of their best cover guys, a corner. On the tight end. We'll watch for that. We'll watch Book closely. A uh, weight of his world, a weight of the world in terms of Notre Dame football on his shoulders. They've done everything they can as a staff, physically and mentally, to get him back to a confidence place here today. Second throw was covered, so Book pulls it down, takes off, and throws incomplete. Just had to get rid of it. Claypool wondering why there was no pass interference on that call as he was knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Farley just breaks on this ball, and Ian Book is ready to pull the trigger, and this ball is going to be picked. He holds on to the ball, and he goes right to the tackle, knocks Claypool on the ground, and Ian Book has to hold the ball and move out of the pocket. Terry McCauley, our officiating rules analyst, is here. Terry, would that not be holding? That's clearly defensive holding. You can't <laughs> tackle the receiver while the quarterback still has the ball, Mike. Oh, a obvious missed call right at the start. Third and six for the Irish in the 25. And Book surveys and throws. It's incomplete. Fink was covered. It's three and out. Right away for Virginia Tech's offense, and that's a defense. And that's what happened to the Notre Dame offense throughout this season. They have not been able to pick up an early first down. Well, that was pure coverage. Everybody was blanketed. Ian Book did a nice job of looking left, coming back right. Coverage was there, and especially the first play. I mean, Cole Komet will probably be a big part of this offense early on. And you have Farley, the best cover corner, chasing the tight end across the field. There's been blanketed coverage so far on the first three plays. Jay Bramlett struggled early in the rain, but then punted better as the game went on in Michigan last week. As Akaya Grimsley back deep to receive for Virginia Tech. Bramley gets it away. Good wind, and he pumps it 50 yards. And it took him right out of bounds. The receiver could do nothing. So Grimsley out of bounds, and Virginia Tech's going to take over in its own 25. Let's look at their offensive personnel. Deshaun McLeish, junior running back, run for a touchdown each of his last three. Watch 11. Trey Turner's a game changing wide receiver. They're very, very young up front. You'll see the classes on the bottom line there. Brian Hudson's a true freshman, but coaching staff is so impressed with the way he has taken to center, which wasn't his natural position. So the quarterback is going to be Quincy Patterson here to start. So Hendon Hooker was talked about as the starter. We told you he had the knee injury, and they've decided here to go with Patterson, redshirt freshman who finished the six overtime win against North Carolina. He is big and physical, and he runs for three to the 28 yard line. 6'4, 245. He was the number three quarterback when they played against North Carolina and won. Came in the second half and put up those stats, which really are most of all of his college stats. Doug, physically imposing play. 250 pounds, and when he gets going north and south downhill, I wouldn't want to be a defensive back coming up to hit him. I mean, and it's a re it's changed their offense. The ability to control the football on the ground, multiple tight end packages like they are right now, three tight ends in the game. But one of those tight ends is Hendon Hooker, 29. He has been a running back as of last week, and now he's going to be the blocker on a designed run, which will not go too far. Only a gain of about a yard or two. 
Dalton Keene, 29, that running back. He stands in there and becomes a blocker for Patterson. He'll also run the ball as he did seven times and work as a receiver. So it's interesting packaging that they're doing here. A lot of questions on defense. How do you handle it? Do you handle them as a back and say it's one back, two tight ends, what we call 12 personnel? And what personnel do you match it with? Do you match it? I mean, they've created a whole new personnel we call 03, three tight ends and no backs. But now third and seven. Patterson is not a terrific throw. Only threw six times in that 6 0 T game. The throw from the pocket. This is the kind of passes he completed, but he has sailed that one out of bounds. And incomplete. It was intended for Damon Hazelton, the wide receiver. Dante Vaughn had him in coverage, and it's three and out for Virginia Tech's offense. Right away, you see what's happening with the with the mobile quarterback, the big strong mobile five D lineman, five man rush, push the pocket and keep him contained. I that quarterback, keep him contained, force him to be a passer. They're kicking quick, and it's John Parker Romo who is punting. He punched to Chris Fink, who did not fair catch, and he's brought down right where he caught it at the 24 yard line. So Oscar Bradburn, the normal Virginia Tech punter. Nursing a bit of an injury. John Parker Romo punted. Nicola share a coat with the Fighting Irish this season. Ian Book, rest of the Notre Dame players, something they all enjoy. The fans come out and line the walk as the team makes its way into Notre Dame Stadium before every game. It's part of the pregame ritual. You see all around the country, and especially here in South Bend. Irish take over their own 23. Doug, what'd you see from Virginia Tech that first year? Very aggressive in the secondary, jumping short routes. Look for Ian Book to put one over the top, maybe a double move. Jafar Armstrong is the back, and here is his first touch on the inside. He won't go very far at all. He'll lose a yard, as a matter of fact. Taiwan Garbett with the tackle, injured Irish player down there on the field. That's Robert Hainsey, I believe. Notre Dame already down a starting offensive lineman and it's Hainsey the junior from Pittsburgh Pennsylvania the right tackle who was injured on that play again the man who was normally next to him Tommy Kramer was injured in the Michigan game and Hainsey a captain in a lot of pain as well. There you see the concern from Kramer and they'll check him as we step out. The uh, left leg and the knee injury, you know, like to Robert Hainsey, maybe their best offensive lineman last year. As you see the whip around, uh, Doug's foot almost gets caught in there and he can't get out of the way. Yeah, you'd normally, if you're falling backwards like that, you want to slide that leg up and out, but it was just stuck in the ground and couldn't get out of there. And 300 pound men do not bend backwards like that. So Notre Dame's lost uh, the entire right side of its off starting offensive line. Josh Lug will come in for now. This is second and 11. Book throwing down field for Quake, who's got it. Across the 45 and just shy of midfield. Good throw by Ian Book. And a first down for the Irish. All right, talking double moves. He got to make him jump stuff because they're aggressive. Watch the out and up now. He goes to the flat. There's the jump by Farley. He couldn't get his hands on the jam after he went by. Beautiful throw by Ian Book. They're going to have to hang on the ball a little bit and go downfield. Gain of 30 on the play, gain of four on the bad spot from first down. It's Book from McKinley. Goes up and makes a play. At the 22 yard line, Javon McKinley. With his strong hands, his 11th catch of the year. Press coverage. A lot of confidence in Ian Book for McKinley. Puts it up for him and lets him make a play. McKinley catching the ball in his hands, reaching over Farley, who is the best cover guy. He'll be right there on you every time. Gain of 30, gain of 26. Irish at the 22. Book back to the air. End zone shot. Just over the outstretched arm of the tight end, Cole Komet who had Reggie Floyd a rover in coverage usually a battle that Komet will win Boy, first and second down you're going to get a lot of man coverage from Virginia Tech here's Floyd on the inside inside leverage this should be this this is a high percentage completion ball just overthrown so Notre Dame get a couple of completions and get some tempo in the offense that looks like the Irish offense of the last couple of years and not the first couple of months of this year. Now fake on the handoff, book designing and will run. Got a block from Armstrong on the edge. Stepped out of bounds before the hit comes. He's out at the 17 yard line. No flag on the hit by Caleb Farley. Yeah. Brian yeah. Kelly on the officials for the no call. No doubt he might have been out of bounds when he got he goes for the read here he pulls it he wants to run north and say nowhere to go follow the back the original blocking scheme so he's just running the sweep and then definitely out of bounds in my estimation. One foot on the white and then the hit 
from Farley, but it'll be third down for the Irish. Third and five at the 17. Five in the pattern. Book burns an interception, his third of the season. Picked off by Dax Hollyfield, the sophomore from Shelby, North Carolina. Just doesn't see Hollyfield, I guess. He's looking out to the right, really doesn't have a throw. He's going to be looking out to the right here on the route. Komet in the flat, he doesn't have it, but he's getting pressure, so he wheels to throw what is normally his outlet throw to the flat and just turns it loose right into the chest of Hollyfield. Chris Sims, that's consistent with Virginia Tech defensively on third down. They drop back in his own. Drop back, eight people in coverage, or at least seven people. They're going to make the quarterback make the right decision and try to throw into tight windows. Well done by Bud Foster, defensive coordinator of Virginia Tech. A legend in the business in his final year as defensive coordinator in Blacksburg. So Patterson, the quarterback, looking over the sideline for help. Play clock running down. And the redshirt freshman from Chicago will have a delay a game. They blow it and they stop it. Delay, delay a game. Off offense. offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Now Patterson is inexperienced. Not a lot of playing time. Limited offense. We saw the offensive package he ran, although he ran for 122 yards. Very simple throws. Block everybody up, one receiver routes, things like that, where he knows where he's going with the football. But he is a heck of an athlete, and he's 250 pounds. He can run downhill, push the pile, and he showed the explosiveness to, to take it the distance as well. First and 15 for Quincy Patterson out of his own end zone, has some time, takes that sideline shot, it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Trey Turner, but Troy Pride was there in coverage. Let's look at that Irish defense. You got Pride back there, a defense that uh, is playing with some pride after they gave up over 300 yards on the ground. Colin Kareem, one of the captains, spoke of not letting this loss linger. Sophomore Drew White was excellent at Georgia, looking to bounce back after a rough outing at Michigan. The corners will see a lot of press coverage if Patterson's the quarterback. We're going to see a bunch of Sean Crawford, who played just nine snaps last week against Michigan. He's coming back from a dislocated elbow. Dalton Keene inside run goes nowhere. Loss of a yard as Osmar Bilal is there for the Irish, along with Jason Nadimi Lola, third down and long. Here's Bilal in the middle. I'll tell you, if you keep Virginia Tech out of down and distance with Patterson at quarterback, you're way ahead of it because he's, he's limited in what he's going to do. His, his forte will be three, four yards at a pop, staying short down the distance to try to wear you out. So the first incompletion putting you in second 10 really sets him behind the chains. Four receivers, one back. Third and 16. Bring four from his end zone. Patterson goes underneath. It's broken up by Kyle Hamilton, the outstanding freshman safety from the Maris School in Atlanta, Georgia. Three and out for the Hokies. Boy, Hamilton broke on this. He was he was making it look like it was a deep safety, and he comes from the opposite side of the field, coming down hard and strong. And he believes what he sees when he when he detects what's going on. He puts his foot in the ground and breaks. John Parker Romo kicking out of his end zone. Fink fighting the sun and the wind. Caught at the 42. Has space to his left. Tries to get out there inside the 30. And that's the third punt return of more than one yard for the Irish this year as Chris Fink takes that back to the 26-yard line. Let's go down to the sideline to Catherine Tappen. Well, Mike, junior captain Robert Hainsey just left the field to go into the locker room on crutches. He is done for the day. He has a left ankle injury, and they're sending him now for x-rays, Mike. The ankles when they look at Catherine, thank you. And that's a big disappointment as one of the seven captains on this Notre Dame team, certainly the uh, leader of that offensive front. Looks like a significant injury there. Book back to work. From the 26, interception, last pass. Throw inside line for Fink. Brought it in inside the 10-yard line. Chris Fink to the 8. First and goal 
will divide Diablo in coverage. You get a lot of man-to-man -man coverage first and second down. Here's Fink on the inside, running the corner out, clear out by the outside two. He's got man-to-man, -man, so the guy's inside leverage. Diablo in coverage from inside leverage. You're going to beat that every time, breaking on an out route, which there is a short corner. Is under further review. And this play will be looked at a little bit closer. Jack Kramer in the replay booth as ACC crew buzzes down. We'll get a look at it. He was in full stride when catching the ball. So the thought was maybe he stepped out, but that left foot is way in bounds. Bring our rules analyst Terry McCauley. What do you see here, Terry? When he sticks the catch, Mike, he's got that left foot down. This is a catch and maintains control going to the ground. See if uh, Jack Kramer can curse. It should be first and goal for the Irish. We'll put it back in the red zone. That interception snap happened in the red zone. And that's the first time that Notre Dame has not scored on a trip into the red zone. Sometimes that stat can be misleading, but when every time you get inside the 20 and you score, it tells you they've been pretty good. But uh, last drive, the turnover there changes that. Yeah, and and Brian that's Kelly's probably here. arguing this. He was so far in bounds that you're you're ruining our rhythm here. We had a little rhythm going there. We make a big play. We get down close. Let us go. And I think with the full stride, you, you want to double check whether or not that foot was still on the ground when the possession. I mean, he was still three feet in bounds. But sometimes that foot gets in the air before the ball is actually caught. As Terry led us to believe, it is confirmed. So it's first and goal for the Irish at the eight. Trying to get on the board first in this one. Book over the top. Number 23, Ashby here. He's in coverage. But once the play fake happens, his eyes go back inside, leaves his man, walk-in touchdown. Cole Komet broke his right collarbone in camp. Had a plate and six screws thrown in there. Missed a couple of games, but he still has five touchdowns now on the season. Jonathan Dorr for the extra point. And he knocks it through. So the good punt return by Chris Fink. Fighting the wind and the sun game. Notre Dame. Great field position. Two plays, 26 yards. One to Fink, and then the rest to Quebec. Put the Irish on the board first. 7 0 Notre Dame. Download the NBC Sports app to watch thousands of live sporting events stream for free with your NBCSN subscription. You can get all the details by visiting NBCSports.com slash live. The Golden Leaves, the Golden Dome, and one of the legends of Notre Dame football, Rocky Rocket Ismail, down on the field, uh, getting his College Football Hall of Fame plaque. He's the 47th Notre Dame player, 53rd member of the Irish overall going to the College Football Hall of Fame. Steve Hatchell, the National Football Foundation, on hand to take care of that. Terrius Wheatley is out of bounds as he falls on that ball. Son of Tyrone Wheatley, former Michigan star. And it is over at the 11 yard line. It should be an out of bounds kick because that's where the kick out of bounds. Kicking team. The ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. Terry, I'll give Wheatley a little credit there for being sharp. And whether it's an accident or not, that's a smart play. Absolutely. He is out of bounds when he first touches the football, which puts the ball out of bounds, and it's a kickoff out of bounds. Right. Sometimes you'll see a player, if they put one foot out of bounds and catch a ball near the sideline, then that's a good thing. Let's give Wheatley credit, give him the benefit of the doubt that he knew the rule of what he was doing there, getting on the ball while out of bounds. So instead of having it back at the 12-yard line, Virginia Tech will have its best starting field position at its own 35. Quincy Patterson on the inside give to Deshaun McLeese, their best running back. He gets a couple of yards. McLeese has had a touchdown each of the last three Virginia Tech games. He's quick, elusive. He hits the ball in a hurry. He's dangerous. He's the type of guy that can take it the distance. And I will give Wheatley full credit for what he did. He looked like he knew what he was doing. Expect that from. Uh, the son of one of the great running backs, Tyrone Wheatley, star in his Michigan days. Second and nine, Patterson fumbles the snap, picks it back up, and gets across the 40 to the 40 
one yard line and Chris down there on the field you got a good sense of the size and how difficult it is to bring down this six foot four quarterback. He, he's as big a quarterback as I've seen of course this year or last year in college football. I mean it's I don't want to say it's Camp Newton but it's like that. He is a big powerful presence and I you know I like Notre Dame's attack early on with the five defensive linemen and here we go again. They're going to do it because they're not going to let him run it up the middle on this defense. Willis was the starter. Hooker hurt his knee in the last game. All three played. Patterson starting here. And he's brought down. It's a good pull down by Colin Kareem, who told us yesterday, I'm going to be tackling a guy my size. I've done with that really <laughs> in my career. He did it there, and that's another three and out for the Hokies. Watch him work behind the line of scrimmage down the line to track him down. And I'll tell you, if you don't have five defensive linemen in the game, it's not as cluttered. He, if he gets any space, Patterson can take off. I don't want to be a defensive back coming up to hit him. No, three straight three and ounces. John Parker Romo will kick it away again into the wind. Fink lets it go, and it'll go all the way to the end zone. Touchback. And the Irish will get it at their own 20 yard line. Uh, another Notre Dame injury on the field on that uh, kick coverage. It's Jack Lamb, a backup linebacker. So the Irish, who were pretty healthy in terms of in game injuries during the first part of this season, have uh, seen. A couple of contributors go down here today and one last week in the game at Michigan. We have seen Lamb mostly on special teams coverage, but he's also been a key part of that three safety look that the Irish have played a lot this year. Athletic training staff out to look at them. We'll take a timeout. Wednesday night, most watched drama is going to have you on the edge of your seat. Chicago Med, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD. All new Chicago Wednesday this week on Wednesday on NBC. The Windy City to a couple hour drive. Windy South Bend. The Irish have the wind at their back. And Catherine Tappen, Chris Sims, the rest of our technical crew down on the field. It's uh, quite windy here this afternoon. Whipping around the bowl here off the two buildings on either side of Notre Dame Stadium. Lamb limping off with the help of the athletic training staff and a procedure foul here to start this fourth Notre Dame drive. Well, if you look at this Virginia Tech defense, Bud Foster keeps his safeties way down. Ball, ball start. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, Chris, you mentioned earlier there's late shifting by Virginia Tech up front. Late shifting. I think that's why you saw the false, false start from Notre Dame. Usually the defensive line gives a move call right as the quarterback's in the middle of their snap count. They're trying not to let this O line get a beat on where they're going to line up. First and 15, Armstrong on the edge with a gain of three yards. Just six carries, Doug, for Jafar Armstrong coming in. And we mentioned earlier the injury to Tony Jones Jr., who's been the backfield workhorse so far. And he is going to get his share of work today. He's going to carry the ball a lot and have to do all the workload. Uh, he moved from a wide receiver position, so he's not a natural tailback. So that's a, it's going to be a lot of work for him carrying the football today. Cartilage injury for Jones in the rib area. Armstrong coming back from the injury on the first drive of the season with a nice run there. A yard shy of the first down as Richie Floyd brought down the junior from Lee's Summit, Missouri. When Armstrong first went to tailback, it was more to move him around and throw the ball to him out of the backfield. Today he's got he has to be that true tailback. Third and one, and they will give straight ahead. And Armstrong trying to get that yard. I don't think he got there. Had to get right to the 30 yard line. This is off a touchback, so the drive started on the 20. It looks like he's going to be a half yard short, maybe less. And Notre Dame's going to punt the ball away. And Bud Foster's defense getting a big stop. Third of a century in Virginia Tech, his 24th and final year as defensive coordinator. A, a run as long as anyone in modern college football will have as a top notch coordinator. Foster dating back to the Frank Beamer days. We'll talk more about Bud as our afternoon goes on. Jay Bramlett set to kick it away for the Irish. He did not hit it very well at all. Had to run up and get it. Good job with the speed Excellent. to come pull it down for Grimsley. But it's going to be best field position of the day for Virginia Tech at the 43. Poor kick by Bramlett. Yeah, he actually double clutched the snap and regathered. Little. It's almost slipped out of his hands. It's a cool, breezy day. And that ball side went down, and of course, me being a kid, I threw the ball around a little bit in pregame, and it slipped. So the cool days, you know, 
Get a sweat going. Get those hands where if you walk out there with calm, clammy hands, it's going to slip out. He almost dropped the drop. So Quincy Patterson will take over for the 43 and try a deep ball that is incomplete, nowhere near Trey Turner. So Justin Fuente, the head coach of Virginia Tech, this is one of the more interesting jobs. Frank Beamer, terrific run, Hall of Famer. And Fuente comes in from Memphis and takes this team over, and it's a very young team. Witness Patterson, a freshman quarterback here. The second and ten, he's going to look over to the sideline for further guidance. Only five seniors on this roster, and almost none of them on the 2D. Inside give to McLeese. Go up the hash to the 48 yard line. So year four, Justin Fuente inherited from Frank Beamer has a 10 win season. They win the coastal. Nine wins the second year. Then last year, six and seven. Bit of a rough start at two and two this year. And the murmuring starts. And you can understand that because Virginia Tech had become so accustomed to eight, nine, ten win seasons under Beamer. And Fuente told us never follow a legend. It's tough. And I did, Bud Foster sticking around really helped that transition. Defensive coordinator inherited from the last staff. Third and five here for Quincy Patterson. The quarterback throws incomplete. Intended for Trey Turner. Again, he is not a polished passer, and I think you're seeing that, especially in these windy conditions. He's 0 for 5 throwing here today. Yeah, he will be at his best if he can get running the football a little bit, do the design quarterback runs, pound it, and then just turn them loose and throw one on ones on the outside, whether it's a deep go route or a comeback. But the outside part of the field would be his forte. John Parker Romo punching for the fourth time this first quarter and Chris Fink will fair catch it fighting the sun and the wind and a hokey in his face at the 16 yard line. PFF inside the numbers is presented by Amazon Web Services. So Ian Book and throwing the ball with three seconds or more from the snap because that's the time when routes can fully develop down the field against the power five of all opponents the good teams this year. Compared to last year when he was very solid, good ranking in both the yards per attempt and the completion percentage. This year against the good competition, the Power Five, significant drop off. And Doug, this is when he has time. So what does that say to you about Book and the way he's quarterback when he's been able to have a full route development go on? I'll tell you after this run by Smith, Jameer Smith to the left for a gain of a yard. I think he's not giving it enough time to develop. He's very good at the quick rhythm passing. Mm -hmm. Send the three-step drop, uh, timing routes on the outside. Those are all 2.4 or less. And the routes that are developing downfield, he, he gives up one of them a little too quickly, and his eyes drop. He looks to move out of the pocket or dump the ball off short. And, you know, especially zone coverage, I think he comes off the upfield routes a little too quickly. Brian Kelly ran out there to get the officials' attention to get a timeout. There's a there's little bit of uncertainty there. 30 seconds. By the Notre Dame offense, so a, a quick timeout. So you're talking about a quarterback who was good when he came in last year and opened everyone's eyes, and everyone just thought, oh, he'll pick up and go even ahead of that pace this year. And that's been the case if you look at the numbers, but then you take out 10 of the touchdowns against New Mexico and Bowling Green, you realize it hasn't been as good a season against the Power Five opponents. There's a lot of pressure on the kid. Well, I think what's happened, is, and no doubt about the pressure, it builds. And being the Notre Dame starting quarterback, has, he's had time to think about it a lot. And a couple of decisive losses to the Georgia game, Michigan line, it weighs on you. But I think what's happened is he's had success in the past on first zone. Okay, hit the check down. Well, teams know that. Now they're jumping the underneath stuff in zone coverage. So when he does come off the downfield route, it's tight underneath. So they know what you do. So now they're going to take that away. They're going to take away what you do well and make you beat them doing what you're not comfortable with. Second and nine. He fakes it to Smith. Looking for anybody open and just throws it at the feet of Fink as nothing was open there downfield. And the Taiwan Garbett with the pressure. He was injured in the BC game, but has come on this defensive end and forces third down. Yeah, Garvin did a great job of just staying with Book, not going for a pump fake. And defensive, but when you get in space, close on the quarterback and attack. Do not sit back and play the game, because they'll make you miss or they'll pump fake you and throw. Just attack, make him get the ball out of his hand. This is normally a pressure defense, but third and long is usually where they drop back and play zone. They're doing that here. Book throws to Komet. It's complete, and he cannot get out of the tackle. It'll be fourth down Khalil Ladler made the stop back up at that whip or nickel position at a Stone Mountain Georgia neither team has picked up a third down conversion 
Ergo, punt number seven of this first quarter is coming. Even in their zone coverages, Virginia Tech safeties aren't necessarily just going to bail and get deep. They're eyeing for crossing routes. They're eyeing to double guys on the outside. It's not a true zone all the time on the top end. You can still go after some big plays down the field. Low snap that time. Bramlett again struggled with it. Hezekiah Grimsley with the fair catch at the 40 yard line. And there's a whistle there. As uh, Grimsley was in heavy traffic. Bo Bauer down there for Notre Dame. I don't know if he brushed him. Too close. It was 37 yard punt return. Back in the day, there was the halo rule. We had to give a one yard circle around the return. That became a nightmare to officiate, to cover punts. That's not there, but you still got to give him a chance when he makes a fair catch signal. Catch, catch, catch interference. Receiving team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. The foul is on number 52. You see, pretty clearly, so that'll give Virginia Tech. Even better field position than the last drive. They'll take over on Notre Dame's side of the field, 45 yard line. I think this is Tech's first foray to the Irish side of midfield. 7 0. 11 minutes and change into this opening quarter, and Deshaun McLeese may have seen his face mask get pulled by Heinish as he was going in there to make the tackle. Drew White was the Irish defender who brought him down. Heinish was in there so quickly he overran it. Defense, number 41. 15-yard penalty, end of the run, first down. He said, I beat my guy, I get to the backfield, come across the face, oh, I'm overrunning it. I'll reach back, ends up with face mask. So a pair of 15-yarders has given Virginia Tech a terrific opportunity here, going into the wind in this opening quarter. They're at the 26-yard line. Quincy Patterson will pull it down, try to throw it over the top, incomplete, intended for Damon Hazelton, wide receiver. Chris, what do you think of these wide receivers? Turner, 11, and Hazelton, 14. Well, they're both game breakers, especially number 11, Trey Turner. We saw the deep post he ran earlier that was underthrown, but if they can get the ball in either one of their hands, they can do something. Get this quarterback some easy completion. Where's a bootleg right now? Something easy. Run. He loves to do this. Going to bounce that to the outside where he's tough to bring down on the move. And he will gain about six yards to the 20. Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, the junior from Virginia, Hampton, Virginia, made the tackle there. Looks like Virginia Tech's going to go quick here on third down. And this could be four down territory with this running quarterback. Needing to get just past the 17 yard line. Legit win down there, Chris? It really is like at moments it seems like it's 25 and 30 mile per hour gusts right now. It's going to affect the passing game, especially going this way as Virginia Tech is right now. So why not run it with Patterson and the Irish are all over that. Osmar Bilal, the second time he brings down the opposing quarterback. And if throwing's tough, Pickens going to be tough. So let's see what Tech will do. Bilal coming off the edge to close it down from behind. And I think Notre Dame is actually focused more on when, when Patterson's in the game, which he's been, on him carrying the ball first. Usually you play the running back first, quarterback second. I, I believe they're playing quarterback first. Notre Dame brought one set of personnel, six DBs on the field. Then they shifted back to gain more for the run. Irish running around a little bit on defense with Arusu Koromo trying to get to the right spot. Fourth and four, and the throw is caught. Hazelton out of bounds at the nine in front of Dante Vaughn. Patterson. First and goal for Virginia Tech. It's a gain of a dozen. Well, this is what you do with Patterson at quarterback. Block everybody up. It's a one receiver route on the outside, two receivers total. But it's the outside route, one on one. Look how far off and inside Vaughn is. He has no safety help, so he wants to be inside technique. But it's got to be a little more competitive than that. Dalton Keene, the running back, first and goal at the eight. Patterson looking left, lobbing end zone for Hazelton. Incomplete. And fighting over there with Dante Vaughn. Dante Vaughn's size. That's where he's a, a good corner in the red zone using that length 
Absolutely, he's physical, he has length, he can, he can battle Hazelton. Hazelton is very good at creating, just putting the defender on his hip mm -hmm. and reaching out with one hand and pulling it in. We saw a huge catch against North Carolina with one hand while he's kind of fending off the defender, and he does a good job. That's a ball that he normally comes up with. They hit that gotta have a catch at the end of the uh, regulation against the Tar Heels, thrown by Patterson. Second and goal. He'll pull it down, hit by a far lofting end zone. And it's knocked down by Arusu Karamoa. They tried to get it to James Mitchell. It'll bring up third down. Boy, he has a chance at first. If he can get the ball up in the air a little more quickly, he had the corner out for a second. Up and over the top, didn't get rid of it in time, and great job at doubling back by Wusu Koromo recovering and getting in position. Actually had enough time to get his head around. Interesting defense, Doug. You pointed it out earlier. There are five defensive linemen on the field. Rush the passer and also make some tackles. Which means you're definitely in man-to-man -man coverage. Third and goal. Patterson will toss again ends of Hazelton comes up with it. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. Hazelton created space but makes the catch from Patterson and takes an extra point for a tie game. Well, he's on the outside again. He does a great job body position wise seeing the ball a little bit of a push off, but he's just waiting for the ball when the when the receiver can see the ball thrown. He's at such an advantage. He gets his head around and breaks on it easily. Uh, he is exceptional. He did it last year. Last week. The extra point is off the upright and deflects in. So Brian Johnson with a little fortune on the bounce off the right upright. Using all your space. Patterson with the fourth down conversion. And Hazelton in the end zone. As a wise man in Blacksburg once said, touchdown tech. I'll leave it at seven in South Bend. Looks like a good night, Saturday Night Live. Later tonight, of course, that's live on the West Coast, so 8.30 Pacific, right here on NBC. Everything, a little Halloween spirit. We were on campus for uh, Halloween here. First down, Moses. Doug, get a pumpkin there. All the students had their costumes go. Some have brought him to the game. You were signaling first down? For sure. One. I think so. <laughs> John Parker Romo's been busy on the punts and the kickoff duties. Lawrence Keyes from the two. Keyes brought down to 24 yard line. Had a good return going. It was stopped by the starting defensive back, Diablo. The divine Diablo with the tackle, and the Irish will have a long field to go. So this is Virginia Tech defense. We've been talking about Bud Foster a couple of times. Really a very inexperienced group, and, and not one of those stud pass rushes as they've had in the past. Belmar and Hewitt. Each with three sacks. Rayshard Ashley's been the ACC linebacker of the year multiple times. He's a difference making player. We've mentioned Caleb Farley often. He's the best cover man in this uh, very young but improving defense. Avery Davis gets it on the edge for the Irish. Gets out to the 30 yard line to pick up a seven on first down. Doug, you think we'll see a little bit more of Davis in this game? He is more specific to what the play is you know they get him on the outside get him on the perimeter throw the ball to him out of the backfield which is what Armstrong started out now both are in the game together second and short and book will throw Brayden Lindsay juggled hangs on and fights for the first down across the 35 and the speedster gets it out to the 36 yard line of course Irish fans know this Michael Young who was ticketed to be a starter that injured he has put his name in the transfer portal so increased work for Javon McKinley and Braden Lindsay as the wide receivers for Brian Kelly's team going quick getting the most plays with the wind in this final minute book steps up in trouble keeps his head up and finds Davis and turns his play into a gain of about seven or eight. That's Ian Book at his finest. That's what he brings. He's more athletic than people give him credit for. He can avoid. The difference here is he keeps it after he avoids, he keeps his eyes up and looks upfield and finds a throw. Irish score first. Virginia Tech responds at the end after one. We are all tied at seven apiece. And we're back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. Glad you're with us on this first Saturday of November at South Bend.
You're watching Notre Dame Football on NBC, presented by Coca-Cola. It himself across the 10, 5, dies to the end zone, touchdown Notre Dame. Home run ball for another one, it's a Lindsay, he's gone, 70 yards, and the Irish are on fire. 132 yards of Brian Kelly's team in the first quarter, just 45 for Justin Fuentes, Virginia Tech team, but Tech with the late drive and good field position. Up by two Irish penalties. We're all tied at seven as we start the second quarter. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Chris Sims on the field along with Catherine Tappan, Terry McCauley, our rules analyst here in the booth, Liam McHugh. With our halftime, and of course, keeping an eye on the other games going on in college football as we have hit the month of November. And it feels it too. From the 44 inside run for Jafar Armstrong. Looks like he'll have that second and two, two, and get the first down for the Irish. First to second down, you get a lot of pressure from Virginia Tech, and they're not afraid to put their safeties up in the line of scrimmage. Look at everybody near the line of scrimmage. The deepest guy is five yards out. You have to take some shots down the field. There's your deepest player. <laughs> I mean, take some shots. First to second down. Rotate one deep here. First down, Book throws the crosser in his clay pool, spinning off one tackle with the 50 to the 48, and Rayshard Ashby will bring him down. Good first down gain of a half dozen. Now you get the third down. Third down to medium, five or less. Winds it, or a second and two. Okay. So you're still looking at a man down here. In terms of what they do defensively, when you gain six on the first down, and it kind of puts the ball back in your hands in terms of how you can dictate to them. Again, safeties are low. Now they may bail from this, but when they bail, they turn and bracket and double. This is true man coverage. Everybody within five yards, and they get to the quarterback quickly, but Armstrong. Gets to the edge and it's to the 46 yard line. Chris, it's an interesting style of defense. One Bud Foster has played over the years and it forces the uh, quarterback to make some decisions like checking to these players. It does. That was a total check by Ian Book through their study during the week. They saw two linebackers at the end of the, end of the line of scrimmage, six man blitz. But Bud Foster, it's creativity. He wants to cause confusion and chaos for the offense. And that's what he's doing right now to Notre Dame a little bit. Third and one. That's an inside give. And Armstrong will have the first down and gain a couple of yards. The Irish doing a decent job up front thus far. Again, they are without two starters. That whole right side starting offensive line. Tommy Kramer hurt last week. MCL injury in the knee out four to six weeks. And Robert Haynes, he was injured early in this game in the first quarter. And Catherine told us before he left on crutches as they looked at his ankle via x-ray. Irish on the move two minutes into the second quarter book with time now steps up takes off room to run for Ian book first down to the 30 as book saw the opening and was able to run forward for a gain of 13. So Notre Dame wants to take a shot watch Armstrong's block book wants to take a shot first all this man coverage steps up through and makes Ashby miss a heck of a linebacker in the middle of the field. His athleticism kicks in. Terrific block on Reggie Floyd. The running back shut down the rover for the Hokies. From the 30. Book. Spinning. Turning. Launching. Out of bounds. Just out of harm's way as there were a lot of Virginia Tech bodies back in that end zone. As, long, as well as Claypool and Komet for the Irish. You mentioned Robert Hainsey there. He is uh, on the sideline obviously. In one pain and two uh, just emotional discomfort as well after that injury suffered in the first quarter. Okay, the right side has stepped it up though. Lug and Ruland have done a nice job in pass protection on that right side so far. Ruland, a graduate student, Lug a junior. This is second and ten for the Irish and play action for Book setting up the screen. Armstrong's got blockers. He's got space and he's out of bounds. Just inside the five. Terrific effort by Armstrong. Jermaine Waller brings him down. It's a game of 26 to the four. 
Chip Long, the offensive coordinator for Notre Dame, very good at being creative with the screen game. And with all this blitz, oh, there's the block that makes it happen coming from the outside. McKinley coming inside. Very close to scoring here. So they mark him out at the four. He got a foot, the left toe touched the sideline. Good call. So it's first and goal for the Irish at the four. Fake to Tremble. Touchdown. Tommy Tremble. The tight end. Play here, or there, a little finesse makes it an easy walk in touchdown. Mess with your eyes. No, I love passing a first down down there. I, I, absolutely. For Tremble, his third touchdown of the season. Jonathan Dore continues his good season as a kicker. He's made all 31 extra point attempts on the season. Their name thought it'd be a good day for their tight ends. They've got both scores. Cole Komet in the first quarter. Now Tommy Tremble. Notre Dame retakes the lead. 14-7 with Chris Sims looking on. Push button. Get mortgage. By the all-new 2020 Lincoln Aviator. And by Bright House Financial. Build for what's ahead. Thanks to all of you at hashtag ND Roll Call. Sending you, sending us your pictures all season long. You know, college campuses Halloween can last a couple of days. Use the costume Thursday. Doubles as something warm for a 39 degree day. Feels like in the 20s for Catherine and Chris on the sideline and everybody else out in the elements. Terrius Wheatley decides at the last minute to slam the brakes on. Touchback. Virginia Tech will take over at the 20 yard line. It was a tough week for Ian Book, a tough week for Brian Kelly. <laughs> and that's like a little, hey man, let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy a little touchdown pass. But it's supposed to be fun. The pressures of coming, especially Notre Dame, but about other instances as well, you know, SEC top teams. The pressure on these kids, they feel it. They come off a bad loss. It weighs on them. College football should be fun. Smile a little more. Quincy Patterson, who started, has played all the way. Hendon Hooker not playing in the 25. Deep shot, Patterson, long ball. No flag and incomplete. Oh, I thought for all the world, Pride was going to see a flag thrown on him on the pass intended for Trey Turner. He was dead stride for stride with him, and as he was ready to jump up, put two hands in the lower back just a little bit, which keeps Turner from making an effort to go for the ball. As you see, a uh, very light mix of uh, rain and snow starting to fall. Second and ten. And Patterson has his pass dropped. Tavion Robinson, the freshman from Virginia Beach, was the intended receiver. And Robinson's usually the reliable guy in the slot inside, works in the middle of the field a lot, up through the center. And that's not like him, and especially in a quarterback that, you know, your forte is not sitting in the pocket throwing the ball. You get those easy completions. You, you got to help your quarterback out. Robinson leads this team in receptions and receiving yards. When uh, Turner was injured at Hazleton early in the season, the two top receivers, 83 Robinson, had to carry a lot of the load. Five in the pattern, third and ten. Patterson escapes. Heads to the sideline. He's brought down by Kyle Hamilton at the 30 yard line. That'll be five short. It is the fourth, or perhaps fifth, three and out for Virginia Tech here in this first half. Good pressure, flush him out of the pocket on third down. You're in your true dime package dropping out of there, so it's only a four-man rush. That's Khalid Kareem coming around the edge, forcing him out of the pocket. It's the fifth three and out of their six drives. And John Parker Romo handling the punting duties today. Has some help from the wind. A little space for Fink from the 30. And well covered by Virginia Tech. He's brought down after a turn of two. Irish will take over at the 32. Four into this second quarter. From the world's most famous arena, the Detroit Red Wings head to the Big Apple to face off with the New York Rangers. It's Wednesday Night Hockey 8 Eastern on NBCSN. Looking forward to that one along with Liam McHugh, Mike. Yeah, original six matchup. We have you here, Liam 
here. Eddie Olchek's at the Breeders' Cup. You'll uh, have that tonight on NBC, the Breeders' Cup Classic in prime time. So most of the hockey departments that work on this Saturday, not on hockey. Back at it on Wednesday, of course. First down run here for just a yard with Smith inside. Catherine, Ian Book is in a, a difficult spot with the pressure on him. He talked to a guy who knows that pressure that he's dealing with. Yeah, I certainly did. It's former quarterback here and now the quarterback coach Tommy Reese. I talked to him before the game and he told me Ian Book on he told Ian Book on Monday rather that how he responds following that loss to Michigan is the most important thing here. He said there's no hanging your head. Respond well in the next game, Mike. Book on first down or second down here, Catherine, after the run by Armstrong in all kinds of trouble. And just throws to the bench and out of bounds, Catherine. Yeah, he said he believes Book is actually continuing to show progress each week because the things they stress to him to work on, and he knows what those are, he has been improving upon. So he's liked the progress, and he just told him, go out there, respond well this week, and you'll feel much better after that loss. Incredible value to have somebody who understands the pressure of the Notre Dame quarterback spot as a position coach, along with Chip Long and Brian Kelly, the voices in the ear of Ian Book, who's flushed here on third down, thinking about a throw. He's going to keep it on the ground and is going to run into a bunch of Virginia Tech defenders. Lost the ball as he got hit hard on the way out as well. And you see the linemen are picking up Ashby off of Book as Ian came down right awkwardly the there. Was down prior to the ball coming loose, fourth down. And they will rule him down, and it'll be a three and out for the Irish. Let's watch close here on the replay. Ran back into traffic. And that is a good call. No doubt about it. And when you talk about the pressures of the quarterback position at Notre Dame, it's different when he came in off the bench. Mm -hmm. It's different when you get thrown in in the middle of the season and you take it. He had all offseason to think about the position he was in, leading this team. They went to the playoffs last year. That was the expectation again this year, at least in their minds. So there was a lot of pressure leading up to this season. Let's see if Bramley can get a clean catch on the snap. It was a better snap. He gets that one away quickly. Into the wind, rolled out and did a good job. It's a better punt. Dealing into the wind, it'll go down to the 10 yard line. So, a very good kick by Bramlett will help flip the field for the Irish. 52 yards for the freshman. So, it's November. Usually, Virginia Tech does business to set them up for December or January. Longest active bowl streak, 26 in a row. Out of Georgia and Oklahoma and LSU. Frank Beamer setting the table for most of those. Justin Fuentes picked up the spare here with the bowl appearances in the first three. That is a tough job replacing Frank Beamer. Right? Look, the guy's a great coach. He's a Hall of Famer. But his presence and what he means to Hokie Nation, so difficult. As you said, Doug, and Fuente reminded us, and he's living it, don't be the guy who follows a legend. It's made for a tougher time and adjustment here for the former Memphis Head coach. That pass was incomplete, intended for Caleb Smith. I mean, Frank Beamer not only has his retired number there, or for what he's done as a coach, but the locker room is in his name. And you go to the football facility for work, it's named after Frank Beamer. And you drive to the Tech campus, and there's a street name for Frank Beamer. And then if you're just strolling around their beautiful campus, there's a Frank Beamer statue. Uh, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not coaching there. I am not coaching there. And Frank's still around. You know, he pops in and out. And Interacts with the coaching staff and the players. Second and ten from the ten, and this pass will be complete to Damon Hazelton for a gain of seven. And let's say this about Frank Beamer. He's great about it. He's so good. His presence is positive. He's not that lurking shadow who's trying to get in your business. He helps at every turn for Justin Fuente. It's just hard because what Frank Beamer did is one of the great resurrections in college football history. And he is beloved forever there. So the second you hit a little bump, if you're Justin Fuente, everybody's like, come on, where's Beamer ball? There's this pass incomplete, as Patterson was not on the same page with the receiver, Caleb Smith. And the three and out parade continues. That is the sixth for Tech in their seven drives. You're going to get a lot of man-to-man -man coverage on the outside, the way you play this defense against a running quarterback. So you're expecting press coverage and throwing fade routes. Well, it's press bail. They bail out of there. you got to convert that fade route to an out. He threw the out. He ran the fade. Snapchat Parker Romo lucky to get rid of it. That almost got blocked. Fink at the 40, made a man miss, turns it upfield. It's been the best punt return day in this first half for Chris Fink of this 2019 season. He takes it six to the 46. And after an exchange of punts, Notre Dame will pick up the ball with 8.50 until the half. 
Patriots, Lamar Jackson, the undefeated Patriots and the Ravens. Al, Chris, and Michelle have it for you in Baltimore. We'll get you started with football on America 7 Eastern right here on NBC. Had a chance to go to Baltimore this week and visit with Lamar Jackson. Part of the Flutie Club, the Heisman Club from Louisville, and uh, a terrific young man. Hope you check us out, enjoy our visit with him, and then uh, set up for a pretty good one. He had a great line. It's in the piece, but he's a great line. He said, Tom Brady playing quarterback in the pocket, it's like he's on vacation. So comfortable back there. Here's Jafar Armstrong, a first down right across midfield. That's what to we, the 49 all, yard line. we all strive right. <laughs> to be comfortable and stand there and look like it's seven on seven, right? And he's got all this going on around him. He just slides and moves and stand. And Lamar Jackson, one of the best dressed Heisman winners ever. That red jacket, mm. Cardinal red, that was smooth. So hopefully you'll join us for that. See if Ian Book and the Irish can get down the field and extend their lead in hokey territory at the 49. Nothing open. On the move, sideline shot is incomplete. It was well covered as Chase Claypool was blanketed. And Chris, let's uh, we'll just get your perspective on what we were talking about with Catherine and Doug earlier. The pressure on a quarterback at a big time program. You lived it at Texas. What do you think Ian Book's going through in a game like this after a bad one? Well, he, he's he's on his P's and Q's. Of course, he's motivated, but you just feel it. You can't escape it. All week in class, you're walking around campus. You feel like people are talking about you. You know, I couldn't beat Oklahoma when I was there. When you lose rivalry games, it holds on lo longer than you'd like and it becomes a big issue as far as people talking about it all the time and uh, it, it's not easy to deal with especially as a young kid but Ian Book's got a, a nice level head on him and he seems to handle it pretty well. Couldn't hit Javon McKinley there on that out on third down and Chris told us uh, in the break earlier how difficult throwing down here is with these wind gusts and that's another three and out for the Irish and they'll kick the ball away. I want to get back to Chris not being able to beat Oklahoma. Oh, come on. Man, come on. Be nice. I was 0 4 against West Virginia. <laughs> a, a big rival for uh, for BC back in the day. I was really only 1 3. <laughs> Bramley kicks it. Let's watch the bounce. It takes a Virginia Tech bounce, and the Irish will get on it at the 22 yard line. And Jalen Elliott grabs that. And the Hokies are going to take over and try to get their offense going. It's a Virginia Tech offense that's been held in check. Just two first downs and 56 yards. They've got some playmakers in the wide receivers, Turner and Hazleton. They have to shot the place. They also Catherine have Dalton Keen as part of their offense. And that, that they do the tight end. He grew up in Colorado, but he told me he always dreamed of playing at Virginia Tech. That's because his father, Wes, was teammates at Murray State with Hokies defensive line coach Charlie Wiles, and both played under Hokies defensive coordinator Bud Foster. First down for the Hokies here, and Patterson's going to keep it on the edge. And Sean Crawford goes down to make the tackle. Good gain of about four, Catherine. And Dalton told me, Mike, that Foster is one of those tough love kind of guys. Still got that fire in him from when he was younger. He said, I actually think Co Coach Foster rubbed off on my dad a lot because now that I'm here, I see how similar they are. We had a chance to talk to Foster as well. He said, that's when you know you've been here a long time, right. when you coach the dad <laughs> and the son. And you say Wes and the Keene family in the stands here in South Bend. A tight end who ran it and ran it effectively in the game last week against North Carolina. He, he was a running back back in high school and begged for his opportunity to do it here. Patterson's a quarterback, but he's all running back here. He's going to run for the first down, too, to the 37 yard line. Again, if you're just tuning in, the Virginia Tech quarterback story. Hendon Hooker has started the last three games, all wins. He injured his knee against North Carolina, had to come out of that game. When Hooker came out, they didn't come back in. And Ryan Willis, who was the starter against the Irish last year, and for the first four games this year, Willis came in, threw a touchdown at the end of the half. But he turned it over too much. So when it started to bog down in the third quarter, they said, let's give Patterson a shot. Essentially his first meaningful time. He ended up winning the game in six overtimes against North Carolina. And because of the Hooker injury, he goes here this afternoon. And there's the man Catherine was just talking about, Dalton Keene with the carry. And he actually on the play before was the lead blocker for Patterson. And he makes them very mobile within what they're doing offensively, just diversity. Uh, he's lined up as a tailback right now. He splits out as a tight end, blocks as a tight end, blocks as a tailback. Gain of three, second and seven. Patterson loads, fires downfield. Terrific step for step coverage by Troy Pride Jr. It was incomplete. Trying to get it over to Trey Turner. And it'll be third down. 
That that's a deep crossing route with time for the quarterback to throw and pride stays stride for stride. I think he may have given a tug somewhere along the way. There's a hand on the jersey on the left side once. There's a hand on the jersey again, but no real disruption of the route. So it's all good. And he's right there on a tough route to cover man to man. A tough one to throw this wind as well. The wind pushes that way a bit. As it hits the Duncan Student Center on the near side of the field and swirls back around. Third and seven Irish spring pressure. It's picked up. Patterson hit as he throws complete for the first down of the 48. Kyle Hamilton's going to get flagged for the hit as well as a Kai Grimsley caught it. Hamilton may be shaken up. They're going to take a, a long look at this one. Still can't quite tell whether it was. Helmet to helmet. Officials having a lengthy conversation. Ball's complete. It's a first down. His head is up, but it is first helmet to helmet on contact. Targeting, targeting. defense number 14. 15 yards added to the end of the catch. First down. And this play is he, under further review. And this year, targeting fouls go to instant replay automatically because they come within a disqualification. And you can't do stance here. You either have to confirm it. Or turn down the targeting foul, and let's bring in Terry McCauley, our rules analyst. Terry, exactly, Mike. And this should be reversed. He's got his head up. There is no indicator. He doesn't lead with his head. He doesn't have an upward thrust and 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 launch into the receiver's head. This is not targeting and should be reversed. And again, Terry, because people will see it's head-to-head. -head. Face mask hits the helmet. But so why is that not targeting? Where if his head was down, it would have been targeting. Because that indicator is leading. Leading with your head means you lower it and initiate contact. You attack and take aim Dr. at the, the review. There is, there is no foul for targeting. Number 14 can remain in the game. First down. Correct. Yeah, he, he did not take aim for the purpose of attacking the heavy opponent. He's just got his head up trying to make a play. And this was a good quick reversal by replay here. It's an 11-yard gain in the first down. Notre Dame was ahead of the curve in having a spotter upstairs to help the athletic training staff take a look at players and I wonder if they'll take a peek at Hamilton who can come back in the game when healthy if healthy. He certainly was jarred but a nice catch by Grimsley moves it into Notre Dame territory from the 49 and it's a keep for Patterson around the edge and Patterson outflanks the defense for the first time and runs to the 35 it's a gain of 14. And a Virginia Tech first down. Boy, Dante Vaughn came up in run support and had leverage from the outside to keep him to a short game. But 250 pounds turns it on and turns the corner. We saw last week when he puts his foot in the ground and turns it up, he can get going. Here he is again at that time. Dante Vaughn had to go low to bring down a bigger man. And Vaughn's a 6'2 corner. That's a tough man to bring down. It feels like Virginia Tech is finding their footing with the quarterback runs here, though. It, it, it started, what was a no gain, minus one, minus two, is now in positive yard. I mean, that was well played defensively. It was still positive yards. So it feels like Patterson's getting comfortable. Virginia Tech a good field position because of penalties with their touchdown drive. This is their best sustained effort of the game. From the 33, a little fake run, throw over the top for Hazleton, and he came back and caught it inside the 10. There's a flag down on the Notre Dame sideline. It's complete to Hazleton with a tackle by Dante Vaughn. Colin Kareem behind the play was slow to get up for the Irish, so a lot going on, but first the completion, now we'll check the flag. And now the receiver downfield, offense number 14. The receiver was covered up, five yard penalty, second down. So that is on, rarely do you see an ineligible downfield on the guy who catches the ball. He's covered up on the outside. He must be on the line of scrimmage. He should be off the line of scrimmage. So what I'm saying is I'm assuming he's on the line. There he is, on the line, he's on the line, becomes ineligible, basically he's a tackle. And it's a heck of a design. Nice little fake draw action. One on one coverage. Big completion down the field. Hazleton needed to be a yard off the ball. And it wipes out a 24 yard gain. And Virginia Tech will take a timeout here, I believe. We'll just make sure that's what they're doing.
And all you have to do as a receiver is look outside of you. Well, Fuente is asking. Terry, I want to bring you in just as, as Fuente asked perhaps for a clarification there. Yeah, it certainly wouldn't be reviewable. He couldn't right. challenge this. And it did appear that I think they had trips right. So it looked like all three receivers might have been on the line of scrimmage. And, and certainly uh, the wide receiver probably needed to be off at least. One of these two should step back. If he's up or back, either one of them. Either one of them steps back, it's a, it's a legal play. Correct, yeah. Either one of those off the line, and he could go downfield. I don't know if this is a timeout or just an explanation. That Fuente doesn't seem to agree with, but Terry, you think that's the correct call? It does. It does appear that both of them are clearly on the line of scrimmage. And in the NFL, they let you get away with it a lot, but they let you crowd that line of scrimmage. Right. College football, not so much. Yeah, any separation at all in the NFL, you're going you're gonna to get it. You're going to be okay. I really didn't see any separation on that play. Well, I, I, it's a free timeout, I guess, as well, too. I didn't see a timeout indicated, signal, or taken, or announced. <laughs> Turner being emphatic to the official that he is off the ball. Look, look at me. <laughs> look at me over here. And now we're holding up the game. Here he is. He'll do it again just for good measure now. So Turner must have thought. Yeah, he's let, Turner's letting the official know, hey, I'm off the ball now. Am I okay? Am I, am I okay here? I'm, I'm about six yards off the ball. Okay, now I'm but, creeping. Here we go. Now I'm doing it again. Okay, one more time. See, I'm on the ball here. See, Coach. Co hey. And, and that, that, that's all well and good, but you go back to the replay and the officials were right. I mean, they were right. Look, it, it's easy when there's procedural stuff to beat up on the officials and everyone's doing it. Here comes their little uh, check that they've watched the 49ers play. They run out of the huddle to the last scrimmage and they mess up the handoff. And it's on the ground. And Alusa Koromoa has it. And you get cute and you get that. And Notre Dame has recovered. It was Turner coming around for a jet sweep in whether they're play action or they're actually giving it to him. Gets him on the hip, tries to pull the ball, and ends up on the ground. And I'll tell you, if Alusa Koromoa gets this the first time, he's gone. He goes for it, doesn't get it. He thinks still, I, I still might ask the heck with it. I got to go to the ground. And Chris Sims, uh, you watch San Francisco 49ers so closely. Kyle Shanahan, one of your great friends, their offensive coordinator. That's what they do, run out of the huddle and go quick. But sometimes you can out cute yourself. We definitely can. And especially, again, we got a redshirt freshman handing it off to a sophomore. Right. There's a lot of young pieces on this offense right now. And we're just seeing some, some raw moments from them right now. And they were moving the ball effectively down the field. Book. Thinking about a shot downfield. We'll check it down to Chris Fink inside the 30 to the 27 gain of 15 for the former walk on, who's now a captain for the Irish, Jermaine Walker, the Waller, excuse me, the tackle. They were going for a home run play there. It wasn't there. Nice job by Ian Book, bringing his eyes down off the deep ball and, and checking it down to Fink. If the Irish score here, if you're a tech fan, that's just a killer of a turnover. They had, as you said, Doug, really gotten the better of Notre Dame with those running plays book looking for Claypool who's covered and he will just throw it deep and incomplete and Terry that's always an interesting one for me as a fan because there's no receiver in the area he's in the pocket you'd say automatically that's intentional grounding you could see it was miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback. So what does an official do in that situation? Assuming he's under duress, it's it's where the ball lands. It doesn't matter whether the receiver ran a wrong route or anything like that. He clearly threw it well beyond anybody. That that is intentional you grounding. You drop there. That's your yep. call as a referee when yes. you consult with your guys. Second and ten to the wide side, caught by Claypool. He fights for the first down and comes up very close. We'll check on the spot. Khalil Latner the tackle. The closest route you have is a slant on the weak side. And Ian Book's looking for it. He knows he has nothing because the safety's jumping. He just sails it out of the back of the end zone, 30 yards over everyone's head. So Claypool marked a yard short of the first down in his third and one for the Irish with 320 left in this first half. Notre Dame one of seven on third down conversions, and I don't know if they got this one. Book laying on top of bodies Tommy Tremble the tight end tried to move him forward where the head linesman is run in 
that spot's going to be sufficient for the first down. If the ball is touching the 17. So again, the yellow line is not official, but it's correct, even though it's not official. If I'm your play caller here, I'm going for the touchdown on this play. First down has been a heavy blitz, heavy man. And that is the easiest to throw the football against rather than running the football on first down. If you want to stick it in the end zone, you go play action here on first down. Charge timeout. Notre, Notre Dame has our second 30 seconds. And that's how long we'll be away. So a chance to remind you, the State Farm Halftime Report comes up. Liam McHugh, Chris Sims, joined by Rocket Ishmael on the sideline. Off the field with Aaron Banks, the Notre Dame offensive line. I think you're going to enjoy that. And you'll see how Michigan responded after beating the Irish as they took on the Terps. All coming up with the State Farm Halftime Report. Banks, the junior from California. And there at left guard, it's first and ten. Out of the Irish timeout, it is Book set in the pocket. Directing traffic and now we'll throw it away. He's out of the pocket there, so he can do that. Second down. It's great coverage downfield because he had all day drifting around. Great protection all day long so far from this Notre Dame offensive line. And the entire right side is new with injuries. Chris. Can't be scared to run the ball in these situations. We just saw another three-man rush. It's going to be a three-man rush here, possibly again. Second down, they do rush three. Book is back. Coverage in the tech zone, buying time, stepping up, looking for somebody to break free. Nobody does. Book takes off and he slips and slides. Good job by Dax Hollyfield to take him out of the sideline and uh, make it a no gainer in third down coming up. I like the recognition that it is three man rush. He has nothing up the field, but does a great job of buying time, keeping his eyes up the field, and trying to make it make a play. Great discipline, right, as you said, by Hollyfield. And coverage downfield, staying with your man. Now you saw Komet running across the back of the end zone. When you've got that three man rush, eight dropping in coverage, your receiver's got to work as soon as you get out of that pocket. Komet was, others were not. Third and ten. Three receiving options to the left, one to the right. And the swing out Jafar Armstrong in space. Made a man miss. Got the first down. It's an impressive play by Armstrong who gets up and is too chatty with Ladler. First and goal for the Irish. You just made a great play. Don't don't get a penalty at the end. Heck of a job. Dumps the ball. I'm thinking, okay, it's kind of man to man out there, one on one, and then Armstrong makes a miss. Still needs to put his shoulder down to get the first down. Great effort. That's a good guy. He made miss too. Rayshard Ashby is one of the top tacklers in this league in the ACC, even though undersized. The guy rarely misses tackles, Bud Foster was telling us this week. First and goal, Notre Dame. And from the five, it's Armstrong left. Picking through that opening, gets down just inside the two with a minute seven to go. Tech gets the ball to start the second half. Let that clock run now. Take your time, let the clock run, milk it so Virginia Tech has no time and run it down. You got three plays left in the half. Claypool man coverage, bottom of the screen. Turn and hand to Armstrong, trying to fight in. Not going to get there. Great drive by Reggie Floyd. Kept those feet moving, wrapped his man up. This is the way Bud Foster's taught it for years. Third and goal coming up. Floyd, little guy in the back coming up. He gets his opportunity one on one in the hole. Kind of ducked ahead a little. Not great form tackle, but excellent job wrapping up. Love to Dark see like Virginia Tech. We've got a Virginia Tech timeout, but I would love to see another play action pass, a bootleg. As many people are at the line of scrimmage for Virginia Tech right now. We already saw a play action pass down the middle to commit. That was wide open, guys. I would suggest that again if I'm Notre Dame here. Over aggressive young, young defense in Virginia Tech. Chris, do you think they'd go that way defensively on a third down situation? I, I do. I, okay. I think they I, I think they will keep people at the line of Bud Foster. You know, usually through his career, is a guy that in these situations is going to go, no, you're not running the ball on me. You're going to have to beat me in some other way here. And if I'm Notre Dame here, I get Ian Book out on the edge and a little bootleg or a quick play action, tight end over the middle. We'll see what happens. 
I agree on third down here to, to the ball's probably gonna have to go in the air to get it in the end zone. My theory always when you're down inside the five if you run the ball first down you're running it four times to mm -hmm. get it in the end zone usually your time to play action that first down play is the best one because they're selling out to stop the run now it's a little if you got one shot and again they're stacking the box and all up in there one on one up top or you have two shots I, I would not put it past them to go I agree on fourth down here and they've made that decision it's heavy to the left three tight ends in the game turn and hand Armstrong lost the Salem, North Carolina, Diablo. Sideline warning. Virginia Tech. This is their first. That's one of the officials having a Virginia Tech come out into the white and getting in the path of the official trying to run down to the goal line. Uh, that big play and Notre Dame had taken such good care of the ball in the red zone and all season long. They only turned it over six times in the first seven games. They've turned it over twice in this half, and the extra point ties the game at 14. It's Ashby in the hole, stepping up, having to make a hit, having to stop Armstrong on the goal line right here. He's going to have a clean shot, one on one in space. And the ball pops out. Bam! Helmet on the ball. Ball's up in the air. Diablo comes up with it on the fly. Ian Book had a shot. A little stiff arm and off and running. No one saw Chase Claypool chasing the play at first and finally turned to the outside. And it's off and running. Walk in the end zone. Yeah, Waller, you can see him accelerate there as he spotted Claypool coming down. Diablo sees a jump into his hands. He missed the Notre Dame game last year with an injury. The man who's making his 16th consecutive start, a leader in that secondary, Divine Diablo, a defensive player. A little smile there. Moment to remember forever. Defensive player scored a touchdown here at Notre Dame Stadium. And Ian Book and the Irish had uh, pumped it down there. Good drive and turnovers, as we said, have been rare. They've been perfect in the red zone thus far this year. But two red zone turnovers and that one in vintage Virginia Tech fashion turns into a touchdown and it is tied at 14 apiece. John Parker Romo kicks it. And Lawrence Keyes will be ridden with the wind back into the end zone. Just nine seconds left. As I said, Tech starts with the ball in the third quarter and the Tech fans who are here in that end of Notre Dame Stadium. They're the ones who've been hollering. And when Notre Dame kneels on this ball, the fans were already a little bit unrest, a little restless early on. They're going to boo the team coming off at halftime. I mean, you're one play. It's 21-7 going into half, and instead it's 14 all. See those fans in the southeast corner of the stadium. If you've ever been to Blacksburg, you've been around Hokie Nation. They are some of the best fans in the country. They'll get it to start the second half. And you hear more of the Virginia Tech fans here as the teams head into the locker room. Sudden flip there at the end of the half. Divine Diablo's 98-yard return. All tied at 14. The State Farm Halftime Report after these messages. And a word for your local station. You're watching Notre Dame Football on NBC. Presented by Coca-Cola. Keeps it himself across the 10, 5, dies to the end zone, touchdown Notre Dame. Home run ball for another one, it's a Lindsay, he's got 70 yards, and the Irish are on fire. Football. 
presented by Coca-Cola. Back on this uh, cold, gray November Saturday afternoon, a look at our first half stats brought to you by FanDuel. Just 85 total yards for Virginia Tech, two and a half yards per play for those two Notre Dame turnovers, including the key one at the end of the half. The reason we're all tied at 14, and Brian Kelly has a team fragile after last week, has to keep them together. Here was his message in the locker room a couple of moments ago. Stay locked in. You've got to follow this game plan. You have to be locked in on your assignments. You, it, it's one play away from breaking on defense if you are not locked in on every single play. You know exactly what we're asking. Offensively, we gotta do our job. We gotta be assignment clean, and we gotta make plays. We got, we'll get the ball to the playmakers, make plays when you get the ball in your hands. Let's go win the second half and win this football game. Stay together, everybody is positive. We will win this thing together. Character will win out. You got to stay together. Let's go win a game. Let's go. That's a veteran coach who's done this over 350 times. Who understands that the team can start second guessing itself, and they're going into for a 14-point lead. And Divine Diablo catches it in the air after the fumble was forced by Rayshard Ashby and takes it 98 yards for yet another defensive score for Virginia Tech. And it's a great run. This kickoff is short. Wheatley couldn't get on it. Now he's going to chase it, let it go in the end zone, and take a knee with a touchback. He's made a couple of very calm and good decisions along the way. Catherine Tapp wants the chatter at halftime down there. Yeah, well, I talked to Hokies head coach Justin Fuente, and he told me our defense is keeping us in this game right now. But we're only halfway there. We've got to stop, start getting going on offense. We aren't taking advantage of the one-on-one -on -one battles. Brian Kelly told his team at halftime, keep playing. We had a great first half. We had a chance to go up 21-7. Obviously a very big turnover there, but I told our guys, we gave them the momentum. Now let's get it back. Mike. All right, Catherine. Thank you. Deshaun McLeese is the running back. The quarterback remains Quincy Patterson, and McLeese is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Kurt Heinisch, the junior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and blue-collar player for the Irish with a loss of a yard out of the game. Listening to Brian Kelly at halftime, it feels like his biggest concern is these one-on-one -on -one matchups that Virginia Tech has on the outside. You have to do your job because the, if anyone misses an assignment, it is a touchdown and a big play. I think that is his major concern. All the attention to the running quarterback leaves you compromised somewhere. And at times, that's on the back end with the, those receivers. Trey Turner, 11. Damon Hazleton, 14. This is second and 11. Patterson throws. It's complete. Hazleton hold it in through the middle of the field. At midfield, he's brought down in Irish territory at the 48-yard line. Give him 28 on the game. Heck of a job on a slant round. He comes around. Gilman to the inside. Nice shot by Patterson waiting for the second window. And then a one-handed catch and pulling it in in traffic. His first three games with a hamstring injury, but the redshirt junior from Baltimore, as the Hokies on the move, looking to take the lead. Brian Hudson, true freshman, 61, snapped the ball for Virginia Tech. Very, very young offensive line. No freshmen or sophomores. And blocking for Patterson. Rolls forward for a gain of a couple of yards. So Virginia Tech sitting at five and two in the ACC Coastal non-league game right here with Hendon Hooker, their quarterback, who caught a hot streak, won three in a row, dealing with a knee injury. He didn't get all the snaps they wanted during the week. The decision by Justin Fuente: Let's keep Hooker on the bench. Go with Patterson here because they still have everything to play for in the Coastal. They win all their games. They represent this half of the league against Clemson in all likelihood in the ACC championship game. Second down, shot play, incomplete for Trey Turner with coverage from Troy Pride Jr. And a flag down, back by the quarterback. First foul, hands to the face, defense number 53, 15-yard penalty, first down. Flag on Colin Kareem will take it to the 33-yard line of the Irish. See him coming from the right side going against Janzi. The right corner. Uh, that's an offensive hand. To the, here was the hands of the face here coming on the edge, and it was earlier than that. It was definite as well. He had his hand up under there pushing. But kind of missed the shot there. But again, that was a one-on-one -on -one post route that had a real shot of being a big play. Well, 
goes to the 30 yard line so it is first and 10 for the Hokies and here is McLeese with a run for a gain of a yard. Number one priority for Notre Dame defense, the lot of five man D line, a lot of stuff it up on the side and protect against the running game, the inside running game, because that's where it wears you down. But the variable is you gotta hold up on the outside. And that post route was darn close. You had one-on-one -on -one coverage with no safety help on the outside against talented receivers. Second and eight. He's gonna run it. And just a yard, Alohi Gilman comes to cap off that play. Chris, third down coming up for the Hokies. Well, I think Doug said the one thing, the post route. I mean, that stuff is there, the deep downfield throws. Patterson's got to throw the ball in the air. He's trying to throw line drives right now, not giving really the receivers a chance to adjust to the ball. Other thing to look for in the run game, because of the 5D lineman sets, Virginia Tech, when they did move the ball in the first half, they kind of smashed everybody inside and got out on the edge with the quarterback Patterson to make some plays that I think you're going to see some of that as we go along here. Five down line and defensively to stuff it up the middle. Third and six designed run Patterson won't get anywhere. Osmar Bilal, Khalid Kareem, Kirk Heinish, Alohi Gilman for his fourth down from here a field goal will be 44 yards. And Virginia Tech's going to try one. Going to try one with the wind here in the third quarter and bring on the Richard Jr. out of Washington, D.C. Brian Johnson, who missed a 41 and a 42 yarder against North Carolina. Now, in pregame, the wind would be in his face and blowing across the field, but right now it appears there's a slight yeah. wind at his back. He's made everything under 40. He's missed all four 40 plus. This is 44. And it is good. So one shy of the longest field goal of Brian Johnson's career. And for the first time today, Justin Fuentes, Virginia Tech Hokies have the lead. Four minute drive to start the second half. Brian Johnson's field goal, 17 14. Hokies. The different concourses here this week and every week they do a hot dog theme for the opponent. Yeah, that should be the Quincy Patterson right there. 250 pound quarterback <laughs> eats that sandwich. <laughs> Touchback Lawrence Keys. Irish will uh, take over deep in their own territory. Keep it on the food theme above the rest. It's brought to you by Jersey Mike's Subs. It's been tough sledding up inside for Notre Dame running the football. Offensive line's done a good job of pass protection, but the up inside running attack has not been there. Now, Javar, I'm sorry, very athletic, very versatile, but he's not a power back and used to be in this traffic down on the goal line. It really showed, got stuck, and then the ball loose for the first time since 2015 against Boston College. A Notre Dame running back has lost a fumble. Yeah, the Notre Dame running backs have been so good about taking care of the ball the last few years. Tony Jones Jr. injured with a cartilage injury, so it's been Jafar Armstrong. It, you know, likely it would have been Jones if healthy down there by the goal line. But it was Armstrong who fumbled. He has the carry here and no gain. Gerard Hewitt in that Virginia Tech defense comes up with the stop. And now Notre Dame trailing for the first time today and going into the wind here in this third quarter. This is where you start to feel that pressure of what happened last week and all of a sudden you're behind things were going well. How do they respond. In the 25 empty out the backfield Chris Fink with the catch his knee was down when he caught it but it's a first down for the Irish at the 37 yard line. Late in the second half Virginia Tech stopped going quite so much man to man on first and second down mixed in a little more zone which made Ian Book holding the ball move around a little confusing for him. There the first zone coverage he gets throws a nice curl around. Irish going quick with a flag thrown here for a false start on Notre Dame. It'll be the fifth Irish Irish penalty. Penalty. False start. Offense number 84. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Paul Komet, the tight end, who caught a touchdown earlier for Notre Dame. And because of injury, Notre Dame's been bounced around with who the running backs are going to be. Tony Jones has been the healthiest. He's seen the lion's share, but it's been a much more by committee. Then Notre Dame would have plans this season has gone on. The show draw here, and that's Armstrong with a good opening up the middle to the 40 yard line. We'll get the penalty yardage plus four more back on first down. 
Well, they're mixing in a zone coverage on an early down, allowed Notre Dame to run the football, ran the draw. So that's a that's one of the first real positive runs on first down. Yeah, the wind about 15 miles per hour. Notre Dame going into it, book the long throw. It's caught by Finky's tackle. A yard shy of the first down. And Divine Diablo had the big one. It's incomplete. Juggle and a drop. Fink thought he had it ruled incomplete by the headlines with Matthew Fitzgerald on that far side. I kind of think he was catching this ball and starting to try to reach for a first down. I mean, he has it one, two, three, and then, re then it comes out. I, I believe that's a catch. Terry McCauley, Rules Analyst, three times Super Bowl ref. Sure, you get control. There's under further to review. Right, you got control. You've got a body part down and then a football move. And I think we see a couple of football moves there. I, I think we're going to get this reversed to a catch. I thought it live as well. And Doug, you said that. Chris Fink thought the same. It almost his knee is almost down before the ball comes out. And as you see, it's pinched against the one and the zero on his jersey. So he had control of the ball throughout, not juggling. Real time look. So replay taking a peek. Yeah, I got to believe it's a catch. You would think this would be a rather quick. Is it a borderline? Is there any question there, Terry? No, Doug. I mean, he, he clearly catches it upright, turns upfield before he's going to the ground. I, I agree. And I think I, I honestly, you know, I can't tell what he's thinking, but I'm I'm assuming he's looking at a first down marker and kind of put that ball in a position to maybe reach. Only on the field is a completed catch. A ball be placed at the 46 yard line. Third down. So the Irish will uh, end up with third and a yard here. Uh, just big picture here to pull out of the minutia of the game for a moment. For Notre Dame, obviously, any hopes of returning to the college football playoff disappeared in the rain in Ann Arbor last week. So, in the bigger picture, with five games left this month, it's can you win out, win 10 games for a third straight year, keep hopes alive for a New Year's Six bowl game, or certainly a positive season. For Brian Kelly, it was no big picture messaging. It was detail, focus, individuals, getting everybody mentally and physically back in the right place to play more to their identity. Book with a keep and a first down for Ian Book across midfield and into tech territory. Reggie Floyd with the tackle. Well, with the, the aggressive nature of this defense in short yardage situation, it has to be some kind of finesse. And Book pulls it because they're coming down hard. Pulls it, gets on the corner, one on one. Floyd brings him down in space, but able to turn the corner enough to pick up the first down. Sophomore Jumier Smith is now the running back to the left hip of Book. Four in the pattern. Book scrambles, directs. And fire sideline, contested catch, held on to by Chase Claypool at the 43. And first down, gain of a half dozen. So we said in the first half, there a lot of man coverage on early downs. You look for the big play. They go for the big play with a pump fake and didn't have it on the other side. And now watch Claypool get off the ground to have to get back up and hustle. That's not an easy catch. Fourth for Claypool on the day, 33rd on the season. Jameer Smith has a blocker on the edge. The big man Aaron Banks who you saw in our halftime feature out there trying to lead the way. And it's a first down for Notre Dame on the move of their opening drive in this third quarter. Chris. Yeah I, I think this is something to look at here. You know the fake speed sweeps the bootlegs things like that misdirection. Doug just said it. It's such an aggressive Virginia Tech defense and they're young. That'll test their communication and discipline. That's what you were alluding to before the half. Use their speed and their young eyes against them. Book, shot play, end zone, play pool, underthrown and intercepted. It is Diablo again. What a day for Divine Diablo. Throw into the wind, hangs up a bit. Book, who was intercepted twice in the first seven games, has been intercepted twice here today. And halfway through the quarter, Bud Foster's defense has scored and come up with another turnover. And it will be Virginia Tech ball. Intended for Claypool. Diablo got it. And the Hokies on top. Diablo the interception.
interception, second of his career. Terry McCauley wipes this ball to two and not a touchback for Virginia Tech. Well, it's a momentum play, Mike. He gains control of the ball in the field of play and gets the foot down. It's not breaking the plane, or it doesn't appear to be breaking the plane at that point. So it's going to be a man rule, the spot of where he first gains control, and they're going to get the ball there. It should really be at the one, not the two, but it is not a touchback. Notre Dame's defense has to come up with a play here. It is a first down run for McLeese, and he'll take it to the six yard line for the Louise. And the play that Diablo made was coming from the backside hash mark. Because his receiver ran an in route, he was breaking on it and saw the ball in the air and broke all the way across the field. And unfortunately, Silas Janzi, the starting right tackle, Richard sophomore Woodbridge, Virginia, is injured for Virginia Tech. He started uh, all the games but one this year at that right tackle spot. Also has some experience over at left tackle. So as Janzi is down, the Tech athletic training staff look at him. We'll step out for a moment. As the Irish are trying to respond to Virginia Tech's opening second half score. There only been two interceptions before today. But that one picked off by Diablo. Has given the Hokies the ball back with this three point lead. Hope now counting on the Irish defense to come up with a stop. After the injury, it's a keeper for the quarterback, and Patterson turns it upfield across the 20. A powerful run. For the young man, the redshirt freshman from Chicago to the 26 yard line, pick up 20 and first down. Julian Acquire closes it down hard, takes quarterback. Great read by the pull and take off and go. And then he's tough to bring down. That's all there is to it. Again, if you are just joining us, 6'4, 245, ran it for 124 yards, or 122, I should say, against North Carolina. 124 total for the season. He's adding to that here. Silas Janzi injured on that first play of this drive. Was helped off. No pressure on his right leg. Luke Tenuta, 69. The redshirt freshman is in at the right tackle spot. First and 10 for the Hokies. And Patterson fires to Hazelton complete. He'll be stopped after the catch. No run after it. He's across the 30. Going to mark him up the 31-yard line. Drew White. Dante Vaughn on the tackle. By the way, I mentioned Luke Tenuta, who's in there right tackle 69. The name may sound familiar to Notre Dame fans. He is the son of John Tenuta, who was longtime college football coordinator, including defensive coordinator here at the end of the Charlie Weiss era, 2008-2009. John, his dad, is now coaching at Cincinnati. The safeties, Luke, is a redshirt freshman here for the Hokies. That run by Patterson to get out from the shadow of your own goal line. Second down. Added three to the spot. The ball was initially spotted. I thought it was going to be at the 33. They put it down to the 31, but on the far side, they said our spot was wrong. They moved up to the 34, which makes it second. And two for Tecker. To get out from the shadow of your own end zone. If they'd gone three and out there, it would have set up Notre Dame. Or on the Virginia Tech side of midfield. Big first down. Patterson keeping stretched out front down. Sensational play by Julian Aquara. Most of his sack total this year came in the game against Virginia. Otherwise, it's been a quiet year, but a good play against the run by the pass rush. Last time we saw him close out and take quarterback. This time we watch him feather it. Stay parallel, shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage so he can go flat and read it either way. Closes the gap and makes a tackle. Third and five. Tech's got two in the pattern. Sideline shot for the big receiver. Incomplete. Ton of hand fighting with Trey Turner. And it'll be fourth down. And that's basically the pass game with Patterson at quarterback. All the quarterback runs make the defense defend that first. Now it's one on one on the outside. Last time it was off coverage through the hitch. This time press coverage, much tougher throw to throw the fade route. It's one on one on this side. <laughs> one on one on the other. There were two receivers out there. That was it. It was. And there were only two DBs either. Not the greatest kick here on the bounce. It'll go 
to the 25 yard line Virginia Tech will take over those of you just tuning over from the Georgia 13 3 lead at the cocktail party. Oh sorry I can't call it the can't cocktail party anymore. Here's the pulse brought to you by Coca Cola Robert Hainsey the right tackle for the Irish left the game with an ankle injury in the first quarter. So no name for that it's regular right side of the offensive line. Quincy Patterson has played the whole game at quarterback for Virginia Tech. He's done most of his damage on the ground as one touchdown pass. This was the turning point of the game. It was 14 7 Irish going in. Jafar Armstrong fumbled. Divine Diablo took it 98 yards. Ian Book picked off once in the first half, picked off on the last drive. So two picks in this game, two in the first seven games. First down run, not going to go anywhere with Armstrong here as Jared Hewitt and Dax Hollyfield. Get in for the stop and momentum has gone to the side of the Hokies here since the end of the second quarter. No doubt about it. After the interception, getting it out of your own end and pushing the field position again. Bud Foster closing out his unbelievable career here. Book keeps it, gets twisted down by Rayshard Ashby. One of the top tackle for lost men in the country and the ACC. It's now third and 15 for the Irish. We're going backwards into a 15 mile per hour win. There is that number. Foster said you know, a little bit of health, a little bit of its time to step away. He's feeling great now. Uh, his uh, son and daughter in law are home. They're going to have a fourth grandchild for Bud on Thursday of this week. A guy who's been around Blacksburg for a quarter century as a coordinator. Authoring another one here today. Book on the cross. Lawrence Keys on the catch. Using his speed. Can't get there. Gets to the 30. Three yard line too shy of the first down again divine Diablo having a star game here today forces the tackle the Irish gonna have to kick it away. You just got yourself in just too long of a situation what Notre Dame ran there was kind of a downfield screen and they were one block away from picking up the first down great tackle by Diablo closing on it as you said he's having a heck of a day. Jay Bramlett had trouble earlier catching. John Shannon's snaps the last few have been clean and he gets this one away he just kicked a tumbler into the wind it's fair caught by Hezekiah Grimsley with two flags down before Tech takes over at the 27. Bramlett indicating to the Irish sideline. Turn Turn kick, holding. 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 Number five receiving team. Bobby plays 10 yards from the end of the kick. First, First down Virginia Tech. Tech. Timeout. So Tech will take over the 17. You can hear the wind is blowing. A little mixed precipitation coming down. And the Hokies on top by three with three in the third. This week on the road, two weeks right back here. We'll be here for Notre Dame's most played rival. Notre Dame Navy and the minis are old. Maybe UConn 56 to 10 last night. You see Malcolm Perry and the midshipmen in here to renew uh, one of college football's really special rivalries. 93rd time. That's two weeks from today. 2.30 Eastern right here on NBC. Hokies take over at their own 17 yard line. Sean McLeese is met back behind the line of scrimmage by Jameer Jones. Loss of two as the second team defensive line is in to start this series. And here it's only a four down line. It's not the five man front they'd shown a lot of the games. You're here. Jones 44. Upright position plays off the block and boom. Lower that shoulder. Jones. Tried to wrap up. Mm -hmm. Jones, Adi Ogundeji, Jason Ademiola, Jimmy and Franklin in the lineup for the Irish up front. Loss of one, second and 11. The Richard freshman Patterson flings. It's complete to the 23. Friendly mark to the 24. Troy Pride Jr. tackling Trey Turner. Third down coming up. 222 here in the third. It's actually a nice rhythm throw by Patterson and Turner. Zone coverage, the guy coming underneath and all that. So that's a that's a solid completion. He's he's gained confidence throughout the game. Yeah, again, only six passes thrown. Really his only significant action was because of injury against North Carolina. Irish substituting to get the proper package on the field. For this third and three. Spread with four receivers out there. It'll be caught and run for the first down by Grimsley. So Hezekiah Grimsley, who uh, has caught seven passes this year, spread out in the bunch and a first down. 
Well, Grimsley's a punt returner, so he's a guy getting the ball, but it's it's Turner and Mitchell throwing blocks for, for their buddy in open field. There's just too much space for Owusu Karamoa to make the tackle in that kind of space on a punt returner. Once again, Notre Dame trying to match up with what Virginia Tech has on the field. Fire drill to get him on, and now the Hokies look over to the sideline with 1.15 to go. Give inside. It's McLeese for a couple. Chris, you have a quarterback who can run, powerful. And uh, this has been a pretty good game plan for a quarterback knowing what he is comfortable doing. That, that's right. I mean, they're going to run the ball. They're very patient with that all year. And then I like what they're doing in the passing game. Hey, Hazleton and Turner can run. Just five yards, turn around, put it on them, and see if they can break a tackle and make something happen. Final 40 seconds here in this third quarter. Uso Cormo went for the tackle a couple of plays ago, left somebody's hand warmer belt pack out on the field, and nobody's seen it yet, so it's still out there around the 20. McLeese, somebody got an arm on him. Drew White pulls him down. And will take it just shy of the 40 as this uh, mixed precipitation, looking more snowish than rain, comes down as this third quarter winds down. Does this not feel like an old school Virginia Tech? Oh, yeah. Uh, the one big play defensive turnover and score by the defense and all of a sudden it's a game They got a three-point lead going into the fourth quarter in a game that it felt like was getting away from them And Notre Dame doesn't score the win there in the third end of the third 17-14 tech back for the fourth quarter after these messages from your local NBC station You're watching Notre Dame football here on NBC presented by Keeps it himself across the 10, 5, dies to the end zone, touchdown Notre Dame. Home run ball for another one, into Renzi, he's got 70 yards, and the Irish are on fire. Virginia Tech, Catherine Tappan, how bad is the weather now? Well, it has changed considerably, Mike, that's for certain. The precipitation has started to fall. It's like a little bit of hail, a little bit of sleet, some rain, so a combination of everything. For Trey Turner again, Turner caught it, spun around pride, Turner inside the 15, all the way down to the 10 yard line. It's one on one, it's been that way throughout. Turner only has to win a few to make a big play, 52 on that. What a play on the ball by Turner running that fade. And you run the fade from the slot to create more space on the outside, but great job by Troy Pride seeing the ball fighting, doing everything he can, but Turner's length goes up, makes the play. Huge play for Virginia Tech. Both guys eyeing the ball. You can't be in any better position for Troy Pride. Turner made the play. At the 12 yard line. Drive that started back at their own 17. Tech has scored 17. They were a 17 point dog. Here is Patterson firing right. Hung up in the air a long time. Dante Vaughn breaking it up intended for David Hazleton. Boy, you're in off coverage down here. We saw earlier an easy completion on an out route, one-on-one. -on -one. Vaughn sees this ball. He breaks, trust it, go get it. And he pulled up at the last second. He actually, if he got his head around, he would have undercut that and gone. He got in great position. Patterson started this game passing three of 60, six of eight since. Couple of big plays. His running is such a threat down here. Second and ten at the 12. 
to the right, one to the left. He's looking right. End zone shot incomplete. It, it's every play is Trey Turner and Troy Pride. And that was Troy Pride. Pushing, tugging, shoving. Somebody trying to get an advantage. It's a Chris Sims. It's one on one football right now. One on one football. Hazelton and Turner are long and big. Uh, and especially with the Troy Pride, Pride matchup. Troy Pride's a great cover man, but as we know, he's smaller. He's at a little bit of a disadvantage in these type of situations. Williams again, Russian personnel off. Patterson gets the line, looks to the sideline for the call. No more one-on-one -on, -one on this play. They're, they're playing his own coverage, but uh, I'll tell you, he, Troy Pride's done a great job of bodying up those receivers. Third and 10 from the 12. We're going to let Patterson run with it. He's inside the 10, put the shoulder down. Got over by the 7, Alohi Gilman and Sean Crawford. Two smaller guys <laughs> willing to take the punishment. It'll bring the field goal unit up. We talked to Sean Crawford. And he, we talked to him about a 250-pound quarterback running downhill right at him and how you're going to handle it. And he wasn't, he wasn't too excited about it, but he'll do what he can. He's basically his response. This will be a 25-yard field goal attempt for Brian Johnson for a six-point lead. And he bangs it through. So the big play, the 52-yard pass to Turner, keeps the drive going. And Justin Fuentes' tech team on the road. Trying to do what they did in 2016. Upset a ranked Brian Kelly Notre Dame team. By Gillette, the best a man can get. By Vanguard, together we're changing the way the world invests. And by Coca-Cola, share a coat with the Fighting Irish this season. Between third and fourth quarter tradition, an 1812 overture here in South Bend. Two touchdowns for Notre Dame, two for Virginia Tech, two Hokie field goals in this second half. The difference. Lawrence Keyes back for John Parker Romo's kickoff. 20 to 14. Hokies. Keyes retreats, takes it into the end zone, and takes a knee. Wow, that was close. Really close. Very close to fielding it in the field of play and taking it back into the end zone. I'm sure someone's going to take a peek at that. The Virginia Tech sideline is jumping and hollering. They're all over. Let's watch. This is looking right down the goal line as Keys makes that catch and hops back in. And they bring in Terry McCauley, our rules analyst. Terry? This looks an awful lot like the interception earlier. It controls the ball in field of play, gets one foot down. The ball is not broken the plane. Ball should go to the one yard line. But does he make a fair catch signal here at all? If he does that, then it goes to the 25. Right. I, I don't I don't believe he did. I did not see one. Mm -hmm. But it would not be a safety because it was no. momentum that carried him. Correct. So I saw no free fair catch signal, which is that rule this season in college football. Anywhere inside the 25 takes it to the 25. I'll just take one more peek at this to make sure. I glanced at him early. And he did not. Yeah. So if that is ruled Dean caught at the one, that's where the Irish will take over. And replay taking a peek at that right now. Now Lawrence Keys back there. Jafar Armstrong has been returning kicks. Keys has returned a couple and has been part of the regular rotation for Brian Kelly in terms of kickoff return men this year. Well, it's been a struggle offensively of late. Why not start on your one yard line and try to go 99? What do you think? Irish with a big special teams mistake last week on that opening drive at Michigan. Jonathan Jones touched the punt that was partially blocked, but was a scrimmage kick that crossed the line of scrimmage. And by Jones touching it, it became available for Michigan to recover, and they did. You see what Notre Dame has done the last three possessions. That was the fumble at the one yard line by Jafar Armstrong that turned into the 98 yard Devon Diablo. Return for a touchdown. And then the two possessions in the third quarter, the three and out a moment ago, after Ian Book was driving down the field and really underthrew that pass for Chase Claypool that it turned into an interception. When you think about it, the fumbles on the one yard line, the interception down near the end zone on the one yard line. And yes, it was intercepted. I, I say Diablo made a heck of a play on a route that appeared open coming all the way across the field. This one's coming back to the wall. After further review, the receiver caught the ball at the one yard line. His momentum took him into the end zone. 
Therefore, the ball will be placed at the one yard line, first and 10. The Virginia Tech fans are all disappointed. So are the players. They thought the rule was a safety. They were all putting their hands above their head in the prayer position to indicate safety. It was not. But it will take 99 yards for the Irish to take the lead here. Well, you talk about character. You're backed up on your goal line. You're down. The weather starts getting nasty. An aggressive Virginia Tech defense. It's on. Quarterback sneak to try to gain a little footing. Hard cut. Hard count from the one to try to get somebody to jump, and it is just a push into the line for a yard and a half for Ian Book to get some breathing room. That is always a great spot to go hard count. The the win. I mean the, the gain is five yards the loss will be half a foot so you always take that shot. Now you're in position you run your offense but this first, just like Virginia Tech backed up the first first down is very key out of this. Here's Diablo who has been the man today for Virginia Tech second and eight inside give that was slow developing not quick hitting and crisp no gain for Armstrong to Sean Crawford the junior from Mississippi with the stop. Third down the M.O. Play some zone here keep everything in front of you react to the ball come up and tackle if you're the defense. It may be a situation where when you're standing in your end zone you do not like holding on to the football that Ian Book may have to hold on the ball and let this work a little bit. Irish out gained Virginia Tech significantly by 158 yards in the first half different story here in the second half and now third and eight. And Book from his end zone throws the crossers come in. Tight end has a first down, took a hit, and kept on going. Taiwan Garbett is injured. He's the one who made the first contact with Cole Komet. And the 6'5", 250 tight end just uh, leveled the punishment on Garbett as he turned up field. And Garbett, who had an injured shoulder Please in the opener against Boston College. To Looked at by the Vatek athletic training staff. We'll step out quickly for 30 seconds. Uh, Garbett not able to put any uh, now getting that right ankle down on the ground. That's what they were looking at. He could be the best pass rusher. Just has not showed it yet. You see as he leg got bent underneath him and pinned underneath him. As both he and Dax Hollyfield made the contact on Cole Komet. He walks off. Tech has Wake next week at Georgia Tech, Pittsburgh, and the traditional Friday after Thanksgiving Commonwealth matchup against Virginia, which could have a lot on the line. If Virginia Tech wins the remaining games after today, no matter what happens today, they'll win the ACC Coastal. So Justin Fuente's team, a lot to play for, but a win at number 16 Notre Dame would be huge for their momentum. Jafar Armstrong trying to get to the end. That's not going to get there. Not going to get there. Oh, Richard Ashby was holding on. And Jermaine Waller had the last hit. The Irish fans wanted a flag at the back end of it. See, this conversation is here by the five. They're targeting foul potentially here. Wow. Targeting defense number 28. 15 yard penalty and automatic first down. The play is under further review. So let's see. It's Ashby holding him up, and here comes Waller in uh, for the hit. And Terry, don't you go back through the indicators there of what the replay booth will be looking at with a very key call for today and beyond. Sure, on this play, Mike, they're looking at does he lead with the helmet into an opponent? This is leading with the crown. This is not a defenseless player, but he's leading with the crown into an opponent. It looks like he does with an indicator. He makes forcible contact. I believe this is targeting that's going to stand. Well, there you see it in real time. That's where the decision comes up. Now it's called on the field, it's reviewed upstairs. And I say implications for today and beyond from a football standpoint only, not the health of the players, which is paramount. Waller would be out for this game, would miss the first half of next week's game against Wake Forest, which I just indicated a very big game for Virginia Tech in conference because of Wake's terrific start to the season. And on top of that talking to Bud Foster Waller is his best all around corner. The guy that comes up and hits and after, after further the, review 
the ruling on the field for targeting is confirmed. 28 is disqualified from further action. The 15-yard penalty being enforced. First down. And it's one of those that is. Uh, you understand why that rule is in. It's unfortunate for Waller. The player was going to be brought down. Ashby had him. Waller was just trying to clean up the play, but that, that rule is specific to protect both the ball carrier and the defender. It's significant there. So Bud Foster loses his best overall corner, and Armani Chapman will come in the game. He normally wears number 27, but he's wearing number 25 here. Which is Frank Beamer's old number when he played at Virginia Tech and given to a player for his outstanding special teams play. And now that 25 and moved around week to week is on the field in a big spot on defense as Book loads and fires downfield for Chase Claypool. Who goes up and it's Chapman with the interception. Flag on the play. Flag on the play back by Ian Book. Let's see what it is. Big First foul, roughing the passer, defense number 46, wow. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Eli Adams, he's only in the game because Taiwan Garbett was injured on that prior drive. So Chapman's interception is erased. And just like Notre Dame helped Virginia Tech with two key penalties on a scoring drive, same here. 46, they got to watch him what? Kind of count his steps. The guy from the bottom moves in. Very, very. That's close. a little bit borderline. Very, very close. Tough call for Tech fans to take there from the 37. The Irish keep going. It is Book again, looking deep again. And behind the punt by Braden Lindsay. Inside the 45 yard line. Pickup of 18 on the play for Lindsay. Nice play action and a nice drift by Ian Book. Tech player as he was running back towards the defense. Goes down with an injury. That's Deshaun Crawford. He had an ankle injury this last couple of games. The reason the ball is behind him is Book had to drift to his right away from pass rush. And throws behind, but great job by Lindsey pulling it in. Another late hit on the quarterback. There is the call. They came mm -hmm. for the 15 yards and erased the Chapman interception. I mean, he delivers a blow. He really doesn't land body weight on Ian Book. Anything, it's just a fraction late. Nothing ridiculously flagrant about it, but late, borderline late. And what a play on the ball in the air. I mean, Claypool goes up and gets it. Chapman pulls it down. From the 44, Book will pull it down. He's being pursued. He throws it to the sideline. Incomplete out of the tackle box. Ball's past the line of scrimmage. Garbett back in the game with the pressure as Adams, who was penalized on that would-be Vontek interception, is on the sideline. Think of the two plays. Minus six, tackle for loss, backing Notre Dame up, turns into a 15-yard penalty. And then an interception turning into another 15 yards and they're across midfield. Two receivers each side here. For Book, he'll give it to Jamir Smith on the edge, only going to get a couple. Dax Hollyfield did a very good game. He and Ashby, those two linebackers who see so much time and make so many tackles for Bud Foster's defense. Coming up big here in the second half. Bud Foster talks about the two of them as coaches on the field. So they're the communicators, they're the leaders out there, and they're playing like that. I, I do like Jameer Smith carrying the ball a little bit more. He looks a little more instinctive running the football than Armstrong. A natural running back Armstrong was a slot receiver before being moved two years ago. Third and seven, they'll throw and they'll throw to their best receiver. It's Claypool down the sideline. Claypool stays in bounds, spun down to the 22-yard line. First down for Chase Claypool. The fourth gain of 19 as we dive under 10 minutes in regulation. Well, when it's a rhythm throw, the ball's out on time for him booking. Chase Claypool, we saw this early in the season with him. He does not want to go to the ground. It's desire and will. I want to go. I want to score every time I touch the football. And they are going after Chapman, who's in the game for Waller. Give Armstrong on the extra four. Armstrong puts the shoulder down and gets to the 15 yard line. So big right now when Notre Dame runs the ball in first down to come away with positive yards. And it's happened the last three carries. 
Dame had been perfect in the red zone this season, scoring on every trip, and most times scoring touchdowns. 21 of those 24 were touchdowns. Today they've turned it over twice. And Chip Long looking for that right play call here in this big spot on the field, big spot in the game, and the Irish season. Book short side keep, nothing. Third down coming up. Tech's defense all over that. Chris, this is third and fives. This is an interesting spot for Bud Foster's defense, given what their tendencies are. It definitely is. I mean, it could be pressure here. It could be drop eight. Mostly this game, it's been drop eight. So I don't know what we're. I, we got a four-man rush. It looks like he's gonna have some man-to-man -man opportunities here. Book pulls it down. Komet is covered. Tech's been all over this. He gets rid of it, and it's incomplete. As he was being pursued by Garvin, who came back in the game, was very effective. This is an interesting call. Four down territory because you're down here, or do you go for the field goal, get within three? You're going to go for it. Yeah, he gets on the move here. None of these plays have been there. All these little movement plays where usually a, a tight end wide open and flat doesn't happen. They're going for it. Play the game right now. Field goal, make it a three point game. But Foster likes pressure usually on a fourth down call, but right now it looks like a four man rush and they're dropping. Comet the man in motion, fourth and five for the Irish. And Book fires, it is caught, held on to, on a big hit at the nine yard line. First and goal, Notre Dame, you go to your best players in your biggest spots, and Chase Claypool continues to come up big. Claypool's just gonna run a little hook route. Holyfield runs past it, sits down quickly, and hangs on the ball with a hit. Nice delivery on time, get it to him. Sean Crawford injured earlier in the series. Back in first and goal. Irish trying to take the lead. Book. And zone shot. Commit. That's the second time that they have been just off on that touch pass. Coverage by Khalil Latler. It's there. Komet has inside leverage on his corner out, so he beats his man to the corner. And you're missing safe when you throw, when you overthrow an open receiver. You see him come from the inside towards the corner of the end zone. That's missing safe, not wanting the corner to fall off in and pick it off, or not even wanting the ball to be underthrown. Missing on the safe side. Second and goal, he brings Komet in motion. Best players to the left. Crossings Claypool, it's covered, Book's in trouble, he escapes, he escapes again, he's on the move, Book takes it to the seven yard line. Third down coming up. And a flag down here in the end zone. Chris Fink was the player right in front of you, Chris, down there on that uh, right side of the formation offensively. No doubt about it. I saw it all the way. It did look like it was holding here. Fink was trying on the scramble drill to escape and fought. Oh, holding. Farley got Defense it. number three. Going to be added to the end of the run. It was more of a trip than a hold, and Buck knows it. Yeah, he, he went down right away, didn't grab him the second time. It was almost like a trip with tangled feet. Tangled yeah. feet is not pass interference or holding. Absolutely. The Irish have gotten a couple of breaks on flags going their way. It also buys them a new set of downs here. Oh, no, it's, it's just a second and goal because it's a hold call, not a pass interference. Second and goal. Book. Claypool goes up. Chapman with coverage. No flag. Oh, there is a flag, but on the other side, no flag on the pass there, but a flag on the near side here. First personal foul, illegal low block, offense number eight, 15 yard penalty. Second Terry, down. I, this is this is a running back cutting. A bigger defender on the edge and I I don't agree with this call so here's the rule Doug mm -hmm. once the ball leaves the tackle box right. all blocks have to be from the front so it appears the ball's in flight and now he blocks from the side so technically by rule this is a foul well that rules wrong I don't disagree <laughs> Well, the the, uh, the flags are evening out here as yeah to that, get that does here. even off the last one yeah. Brian Kelly Asked something of the line judge, Richard Meisner, and Meisner has brought field goal from 35 yards. He's only missed one this year. Out of the hole, the Jay Bramlett. 
And Doors kick is no good. He missed it to the right. It was drifting that way. And Virginia Tech's defense comes up with the hold. 7-0-2 to go. The Hokies are the ones making the plays here in this second half. They lead by six on the road. They have the ball with 7.02 to go. Everybody hosting Harry Kane is on the ball to a rough start this year. They could have support Premier League mornings tomorrow, 11.30 a.m. Eastern on NBCSN. Of course, Premier League mornings. Rebecca Love, the guys in the studio, get you going bright and early. And you have no excuse to miss it. Extra hour of sleep. Turn back the clocks tonight. Virginia Tech trying to turn back the clock to 2016 and upset the ranked Irish in South Bend. They lead by six. They've got the ball their own 20. And that'll be on Notre Dame. When Oquara got in the neutral zone, the tackle to Nuda moved. Offside defense, number 42. Defender jumped in the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to move. Five yard penalty. First down. So that last Notre Dame drive was 17 plays, 82 yards. As Chris Sims said to us during break, I mean, how many things happened? We brought in Terry McCauley five times in that drive. Very interesting drive and a missed field goal means Notre Dame's defense has to come up with a stop. Full boat of timeouts left for the Irish. It is Deshaun McLeese with the carry. Give him a yard on first down. Virginia Tech's offense dug in the first seven possessions. They couldn't get their footing. 6 3 and outs. But since then, they have not had a 3 and out. They've been moving it and keeping it away from Notre Dame. And here, with their style of offense, they can grind the clock very easily. And especially starting out with the penalty and get you in a first and five situation. Technically just shy of the 27. That's why it's second and four. Patterson's got that on the handoff for the first down to Trey Turner. Turner to the 32 yard line with we'll the chains with 618 left. Again, the quarterback story for Tech, if you're just tuning in, watching a bunch of college football today. Patterson finished off the North Carolina game. And when he did the six overtime win a couple of weeks ago, he was the number three quarterback when he showed up at the Worship Field Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. Ryan Willis was the start at the beginning of the season, then Hendon Hooker took over, got hot with three in a row. Hooker hurt his knee in the first half of the Carolina game. Willis came in, finished out the half. When he hit a rough spot, Patterson took over. And his offense is uh, right back to where it was when Hooker got in there. Oquara with the tackle of McLeese. Deshaun gains eight yards there. And we're approaching five minutes left in regulation. You're having to defend the quarterback run so much that they're starting, that Virginia Tech is starting to crease it inside and gaining that momentum. The first first down, you give that away because it was a first and five situation. Now you're sitting second short again. If they pick up this first down, it's going to be down under two minutes before Notre Dame sees the ball. 100 rushing yards for Virginia Tech on the day. Their longest run has been 20. Notre Dame's run defense has been much better than it was last week when they gave up 300 in Ann Arbor. But wearing down here a bit, Patterson's going to get another first down. Chris, they're at the 44-yard line with just under five minutes to go. Hey, the one thing I noticed, guys, I mean, we know they want to run the ball. Where's the 5D line that's set right now? Dare them to throw it. You want There's them to throw one, it. Two, three, no? four, 5D line at all first half. I know, and we haven't now seen it four. here on this drive, and this is the drive you want it. You want them to throw it, force an incompletion, stop the clock, do something like that. You know Virginia Tech wants to run it up the middle in this scenario. I would have a nine-man box. I'd have right. everyone up in there. Yep. Make the guy do what he does not want to do, and this offense doesn't want to do, which is throw the football. Virginia Tech milking every second off that clock. McLeese is caught behind the line scrimmage. He works back to the line. And so now it'll be second and ten. The next snap will come under four minutes to go. The flip side is, though, that they, Virginia Tech began to make plays one-on-one -on -one in the pass game on the fade routes, and it's what led them to their last drive. So you start getting nervous about those matchups on out outside because even when you're in great position, these receivers can go up and get the ball. Notre Dame thinking how again to, two deep safeties. Mm -hmm. How to manage the clock? I would have those safeties up in the box and force them to throw the football. Well, they look upstairs from the coach's box, tell them down the sideline what they want to do. Is well, they're cheating down now. Play uh, clock's going to go all the way down. They'll take a timeout to avoid delay of game. Milk every second off of it. Our, our timeout. Virginia, Virginia Tech. Tech. 
339 to go. They're, they're Tech by six. Time, time, Second and ten coming up. iPhone World. In September, they were asking how big this guy's buyout is. In November, they'll be buying him drinks in Blacksburg for a win over Notre Dame if his team can hold off at 339. Justin Fuente and the Hokies that close to a road upset of the Irish. Second and ten, Notre Dame's defense. Trying to come up with another big play. It's McLeese again. Drew White running in there to make the stop. Call it Green helping. See if the Irish control the clock with a timeout here. And they do. 3 and 34 to go to be third down coming up. This is a, such an interesting week. Uh, we come here seven times a year. Catherine, Chris, Doug, uh, Wallace, Rob Hyland, our producer, Pierre Musa, our director, our great Notre Dame team. And you just get a sense. There is a lot of pressure. And when the playoff hopes are there and everything, this is a great place. And then when you lose, all of a sudden it becomes a crisis. That's what happens when you work and play someplace where you're expected to win every game. And this was a tight and tense week around this place. The expectation was so high. And after the loss last week and the way they lost, you felt it. We went and watched practice on Thursday. It was quiet. I mean, it was an efficient practice. Guys are throwing and catching and doing everything. But you could feel it in the air. You feel it around the hotel. And Brian and Kelly did everything. Went physical with his team. Had them hit a little bit more. He became the most vocal part of this Notre Dame team. This is a group of incredibly nice young men. None of them really are yellers and screamers. So their leadership manifests itself academically and emotionally, but not out loud. And Brian Kelly was the one trying to get his guys to match the moment here. Third and ten is the moment now. And Patterson's going to throw. He's in trouble. And he is brought down when needed. The best thing Notre Dame does on defense, rush from the edge. Colin Kareem, Julian O'Quara, timeout. Fourth down. I was really thinking quarterback draw here, but Kareem comes around the loop and in the back door and chases him down before he can get out of the pocket. But if Patterson can step up and through, he might have a chance. But Kareem, so athletic, turns the edge, push off, get low, dip that left shoulder and turn the corner. Huge play to get off the field defensively and give your offense an opportunity. It's still only a six point game. Chris Sims and Catherine down the field. Chris, give me a sense of the wind here as Chris Fake is going to go back and take this punch. It is gusty and it's blowing from the Virginia Tech sideline to the Notre Dame sideline. So it's going to play a little sideways as well. But going a little bit everywhere right now. It does swirl in this state. I, I walk the field before every game and I can never quite get it down to feel where you're going with the win or against the win. If that's the case, throw the ball towards the Notre Dame sideline to the right side of the field on this drive. John Parker Romo put the nose down to hit a line drive. It's get away and it's a terrific kick by John Parker Romo. Oscar Bradburn, their normal punter, the Aussie out with a bit of a groin injury, but John Parker Romo, sensational pressure kick there. Backs the Irish up at their own 13. Buckle up, here we go. 322 left. Notre Dame needs a touchdown. Well, the numbers have been better for Ian Book. Couple of key interceptions. One in the red zone, one in throwing towards the end zone. But now, with 322 and one timeout left, the senior from El Dorado Hills, California, has a chance to put together a game winning drive. Will his Irish offensive line give him time to turn it loose from the 13? Cross for Claypool, incomplete. It'll be second down. Well, Bud Foster goes to zone. It's going to be a long drive. It's 87 yards. So he starts out in zone, drifts off, which should be an easy completion for Notre Dame and a good starter. And it's dropped by your best receiver. This is a defining moment for Ian Book, this drive. And drops have been a part of the story, too. Irish receiving core has had five drops in each of the last two games. From the 13, three man rush, so Book takes off, trying to pick up blocks. He's going to get to the 20. It'll bring up third and three with 3.13 to go. And Notre Dame just one timeout. Quarterback runs would be instrumental in a long drive. I, I feel like if this drive happens, it's because Ian Book gets out of the pocket and busts the long run. Since the anxiety in the stadium, not just with the game score situation, but also with the deliberate nature of the Irish are. Working with to pick up this first down. Third and three. Four down territory. 
Tech will rush four. Book has a pocket. He fires in the middle. And Komet does not see a flag for holding. Everybody's looking for it. It's not there. And we're down to fourth down. Cole Komet running down the middle of the field is going to break wide open. Wide open. Here he is coming down the middle of the field. And it's just grab and hang on as he goes by. He's anticipating an in cut, instead, reaches out and grabs the receiver. So it comes down to fourth and three at the 20 yard line. Game's not over if the Irish don't pick up a first down. They could still technically get the ball back, but there with a huge hole. Looks like pressure. They don't get three yards. Coming off the edge, man to man coverage. Here they come. And Book fires. It's caught by Armstrong for the first down. Fighting for the sideline. He is out of bounds at the 25. So first down, Reggie Floyd the tackle. 2.34 to go. The drive continues. First first down is always huge in that two-minute drive. Now you get a little more aggressive in your play call. It's not a two, so the clock winds. Here is Book. It's a three man rush again. Zone behind it. So underneath Armstrong trying to work down the field to the 30. Clock keeps turning. There is enough time to hit the underneath stuff because the clock stops on first downs. There's still over two minutes, but you only have one timeout. You're going to go a little bit quicker pace now as you get under 230. Dax Hollyfield, the tackle on the last one. Again, a three man rush. Again, the zone coverage. Book looking for somebody to break free. He's scrambling. He needs his guys to move. It runs for the first down and get out of bounds. 36 yard line. It's a good play by Book there to keep that moving with nothing open downfield. You feel the three man rush. Hang on to it as long as you can because you may have the big play down the field getting out of bounds and the first down huge. Chris, don't the Irish receivers need to move more when the first pass isn't open? Definitely. They got to adjust. The thing that we got to look at too, the outside receivers, they're getting like man on man coverage. You could throw some comebacks and things on these guys. Deep shot for Claypool. It's up in the air. They twist and turn. No contact. Caleb Farley, the coverage, minute 52 to go, and it's second down. You know, I mean, oh, I just sorry, Doug, I didn't, I didn't mean to cut you off, but just because they're dropping eight doesn't mean it's too deep either. They're not playing too deep looks, so there's some chances to throw some outbreaking routes to the outside receivers, McKinley and Claypool, the, the first few plays of the drive. Absolutely, the corners are off on the outside, and the safeties are still sitting flat. Someone may run, like Claypool was one-on-one -on, -one on the outside going deep. Trying to mix in a run here. It was not a three-man rush. The run's only going to get to the 40-yard line. That's it. Minute 45 left. Notre Dame's going to take its final timeout. It is four-down territory all the way down the field. That's why they tried to slip a run in there, but it cost you your timeout. timeout. Back in 30 seconds. Irish facing third and seven. Third and final timeout. Timeouts now. If uh, they don't pick up the first down here, the game will be over. Virginia Tech will just kneel on it the rest of the way. So four down territory, third down coming up. Third and seven at the 40. Irish need a touchdown and an extra point. That big missed field goal will loom large if the Irish get down in field goal territory. First, they got to pick up a first down. It's third and seven. Five in the pattern for Book. He surveys, crossing. It is caught by Avery Davis in the middle of the field. Big catch in a big spot for Davis at the 48 yard line. A minute 39 left. Davis made a nice move on his man and shifted in there. If he got that ball early, he was off and running. James move. Clock restarts. 90 seconds left. It is Book in the pocket. Gets rid of it to the sidelines. Davis again. He's down just shy of the 45 yard line. Irish receivers have to hustle back to the line. Minute 20 to go in regulation time. They, they're finding a good matchup with Davis out of the backfield. From the 46, second down, Davis scans, he gets out, sideline toss is ruled, ruled, a catch. They'll look at it certainly in replay, Claypool trying to drag the foot the last second in front of Farley at the 33-yard line. It's 13 if it stands, it's a catch and it is good. Absolutely, good. that's the off coverage thing. Let's just watch, make sure he's got the ball all the way through down to the ground. That's a terrific, that's an unbelievable play by Claypool. The left foot was the lead foot. That was his next natural step. What a drag with the right. That is big time, big time play. And the off coverage that Chris was talking about, there's the opportunity to throw some of these one-on-one -on -one outside routes. Hey, and let's, let's give a pop to Richard Meisner, the line judge, as they collaborated on that call in real time. That is such a hard call. The call is as good as the catches. And the field is confirmed. And that was
was well done all the way around. Now Claypool dealing with a shoe issue, trying to get his shoe tied as it's first and ten for the Irish at the 33. With a minute ten now, you're at the 33-yard line. Throw the ball either on the sideline or past the. If you're throwing in the middle of the field, get it past the chains. First down, stop the clock, the reset. You don't waste a lot of time. But if you get tackled short of a first down in the field of play, the clock will continue to run. Bud Foster in his final year as the defensive coordinator trying to get another in a long list of big wins with the Tech defense. Russian three here. Book out of the pocket. Taking the shot towards Claypool. A lot of contact. No catch. No flag. Second down. 64 seconds to go. I like Avery Davis in the middle of the field coming out with this three man rush. If Avery Davis can work on a linebacker inside, get some space. And then we see Claypool trying to go up. The ball's landing out of bounds anyway. That does serve a purpose to back off coverage, so, so you may be able to come back with something in front of the corner. But Claypool is going to come out here for a play, Doug, as he hit the ground there hard, just trying to catch his breath. So Claypool, best receiver, not on the field, looking for Davis on a wheel route. It's incomplete for Fink underneath. That was covered all across the field very well by Virginia Tech. Alan Tisdale had Davis, the man you were talking about, blanketed. Claypool back on the field, third down, one minute to go. Yeah, they were looking to sneak Davis down this boundary on a wheel route one on one. It was well covered, had to come underneath. There was nothing there. Good job just throwing the ball away. Now you're in the mode though on third down to keep a play alive as long as you can. You need positive yardage if you're Notre Dame. It is four down territory, obviously. Empty backfield. Jafar Armstrong, the running back who was a slot receiver by trade, is the fifth in the pattern. They throw his way, almost picked, incomplete. Down to one play, fourth down with 57 seconds. Khalil Ladler broke it up. Ladler broke hard underneath that. This is a route that I'm sure Ian Book thinks is going to be a steal. And Ladler breaking. I mean, the ball was in a good spot, the only spot it could be. All right, fourth so here down. we go. Fourth down. Virginia Tech sidelines bouncing. Extend the play if it's not there. Hokey fans making noise. To pass. He's looking. It's thrown. It's high to the 10. Play pull to the 8th. First and goal Irish. 52 seconds remain. Game 26 on a gun heaven. Clock starts again. One on one up top to Claypool. Looking that way, it's covered. Brooks scrambles. He rolls. He looks. He throws it away. 39 seconds left. Claypool on the big in route, going downfield. A lot of go routes, a lot of posts. Instead, he's going to bring it flat and run the in route in space. Big injury for Tech here. As you watch the play, it kept it alive on fourth down. Caleb Farley is down in the end zone and injured. Athletic training staff is out looking at the best cover man who has seen a lot of Claypool during the day. Remember, Jermaine Waller, their other starting corner, was ejected for a targeting foul here in this second half. So Tech's going to try to hold up now with their backup corners on the field. What a moment for this Virginia Tech defense. Again, no timeouts for Notre Dame. Anything that gets tackled in the field of play becomes a fire drill. You want to be throwing into the end zone. Cole Komet has been a stud in this area as a receiver. Brian Murray is on the field. He made a play earlier. He had only been on the snaps defensively for Tech for five plays all season. And now Murray's on the field in this must moment here to win this game on the road for Tech. Second and goal for Book. Look at end zone throws. Incomplete. Looking for Claypool. Third down coming up. Reggie Floyd with the coverage. Two end zone shots left. You get the feel that he's starting to really hone in on Claypool. He wanted to throw the fade route to play before as well, but it was well covered. Here he's looking for him, even in double coverage, working the back of the end zone. Look, at this point, you go your best. You go 83 or 84. Absolutely. And you take your chances with your best players. Come at the tight end, who's lined up to the left, tight to the line. Claypool closest to the Pressure coming lineman. here. Pressure coming here. On the right, fake to Armstrong. Run, book five.
he has worked on a distinct routine visualization he'll look down take a deep breath he'll twirl that left arm four times he'll step forward for the go ahead point bad snap oh what a jump by Brent with the holder and the Irish take the lead forget the kicker the holder's the rock star there wow freshman Jay and Trey Turner and Damon Hazelton to pull it down. 17 seconds left. Second and 10. Three man rush Irish. Patterson from zone end zone. He's launching. He's throwing it midfield. Jump ball and it's incomplete. Oh, it deflected forward. And Hezekiah Grimsley was behind. If this ball bounces up into the air at all off the deflection rather than straight forward, Grimsley, number six, coming here. If this goes up in the air at all, he's behind everyone in an opportunity to go find it. But you have to play the ball in the air. It's Vaughn Gilman going up to make a play on it. Keep it in front of you defensively. Third, third and ten Irish backing off their players. They've got five players, 25 yards from the line of scrimmage. And the six you see in shot, Patterson. Bumped as he throws, got under it, intercepted. Kyle Hamilton goes down, and the Irish will escape with a come from behind victory. plays 87 yards two minutes 53 seconds two fourth down conversions on the drive 41 minutes without a point Ian Book changed a lot with that run for a touchdown takes a knee and the Irish will take it to six and two and they will win at home for the 16th consecutive time third longest streak in Notre Dame history 
Justin Fuente's team and walk out of here a bit frustrated but also they should feel really good about what is ahead as they get a shot at the ACC Coastal. They went with their backup quarterback Patterson and had Notre Dame down to their last breath. Here's Catherine Tappen. All right, Mike, thank you, Coach. You said you wanted tonight to restore the identity of your football team. What did you What did you learn from them tonight? Resilience, for the most part. You know, we um, we had to fight to the very end, and uh, I'm really proud of my football team and the way they just kept fighting. Uh, you know, obviously it didn't look great at times, uh, but they kept playing, kept playing hard, and uh, that's what you have to do to have character to win kind of these kinds of games. The final scoring drive that Ian Book put together, uh, what did that show you about the way your quarterback played? Well, you know, he's obviously taken a lot of heat, you know, for what is really a team game, and he stepped up big and very, very difficult circumstances. This is tough weather conditions, and he uh, he led us to the scoring drive. This is a, really the beginning for him, uh, and he'll only get better because of this. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, Catherine. Mike? All right, Tap, thank you. Doug Flutie, you played the position. You know the pressure that's on your shoulders, and the plays that Ian Book made in that final drive with the rest of his teammates will change a narrative here going forward. Absolutely. His teammates stepped up for him, and he made huge plays. I think the fact that he realized there's enough time to take the underneath stuff and drive at the field, this gained the confidence. We said it was a defining drive before it started. For the rest of this year, this was a defining drive for Ian Book and this team. And Chase Claypool, what do you do when you need your biggest plays? You go to your biggest players. And uh, Notre Dame's top pass catching option came up big with those two fourth down conversions. Sometimes it turns into players, not plays. Mm -hmm, right. You know, it, so many times you, you read out coverage and you're going to whoever the coverage dictates. And sometimes you got to say, you're my guy, I'm getting you the ball, find an open window. And, and that's what he did. He found Claypool in the deep end route on a fourth down play. It was huge. And Virginia Tech gave you everything, too. Virginia Tech with, had corners injured, pass rushers injured during that drive. I think this Virginia Tech team should feel pretty good about their chances in the Coastal. No doubt about it. They're very young. They're growing throughout the year. They're getting better every week. And they were right there knocking on the door and, and had this in their palm of their hand. So the Irish will go to Durham next week and play Duke. And then after that, two home games, the traditional battle with Navy. And then they'll play Boston College before closing the season at Stanford. With the Irish hopes of a 10-week season stay alive as they win their 16th consecutive game. Keeps it himself across the 10, 5, dies to the end zone, touchdown Notre Dame. Home run 